the proud and the red at Memorial Stadium. Nebraska football, rich in tradition and pride. It's a new Nebraska this season with a new face on the sideline, a new program, and another hard-hitting challenge as Missouri's versatile quarterback Brad Smith leads the Tigers against Big Red. Smith, a dangerous runner and passer, will put the Nebraska defense on alert for all four quarters. A critical battle for the top seat in the North, Missouri at Nebraska. Big 12 college football next on FSN. Nebraska as good as it gets, and it's also the 267th consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium dating back to the 1962 season. From the campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, Kia Sarah presents Big 12 football. Today, the Missouri Tigers take in on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and the winner today, a huge advantage in the Big 12 North Division standings, especially Missouri, if they can pull off the upset on the road, as Missouri has two of their last three at home, the only road game at Iowa State. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapham, and welcome to Lincoln. Well, the Nebraska Cornhuskers off to their worst start in decades. A new head coach, a brand new system being implemented, and plenty of pressure on quarterback Joe Daly. Well, there's no question. Joe Daly is the straw that stirs this offensive drink, but he's had some consistency difficulties. You'll see that he's put up some great numbers. He's still learning this West Coast offense, though. But look, he's the first quarterback in Nebraska history to throw for over 300 yards in a game. And he tied a single game record, six touchdowns in the game against Western Illinois. So he has had his moments, but he's also thrown 13 interceptions. So he's still not making all the reads and getting his wide receiver and himself on the same page. Missouri comes into the game off back-to-back -back losses, missing a key component in tailback Damian Nash. And a lot of pressure as well as on their, on their quarterback, Brad Smith. Most are saying he is not coming up with the big plays that he had last year. He has been inconsistent as well. And I think he's trying too hard. I mean, I think bottom line is he's pressing. He just needs to relax, improvise, create plays. Those numbers aren't as good as what he put up last year. And here's how he beat Nebraska last year. This uh, run in the football. And, and this, season, this game, this season, Nebraska wants to make Brad Smith beat him with his arm, not with his legs and feet. Because last year he scored three touchdowns rushing, and then this throwback pass, he scored a receiving touchdown as well, showing you his versatility, his athleticism. This guy is the real deal in terms of an athlete at the trigger position, but he just has to go out and create plays. But the first game we had in his career against Oklahoma, he wasn't thinking, he was reacting. That's what he has to do. You know, Missouri is also trying to win consecutive games against Nebraska for the first time in 30 years. So beautiful football Saturday in the upper Midwest. Homecoming weekend in Lincoln, Nebraska. If it boils down to the defensive units, Missouri should have a huge edge. They come into the game leading the Big 12 in total defense. The black shirts, they've been victimized. Can they come up big though? Against Brad Smith and the Tigers. Stay with us. We'll be right back to Lincoln, Nebraska with the opening kick. Nation, Bill Callahan leading his Nebraska Cornhuskers out to Memorial Stadium, a sold-out crowd as usual. He is here at College Football Saturday, and we welcome you back to Lincoln. Joel Myers along with Dave Lapman down on the sideline, Jim Knox. Let's join him now with Missouri head coach Gary Pinkle. Knoxy. Coach, last night, flight difficulties. You were not able to go through your regular pregame ritual today. Any concerns about that? No, no, we, we, we we're ready to go. I mean, there's, you know, we, you got to adjust. There's no, there's no excuses. So we're ready to go. We had a good night's sleep and, uh, you know, hope, uh, uh, plan to play well. Haven't won here since 1978. The key ingredient in beating Nebraska today, what does Missouri have to do? Well, obviously, we just got to play well. You got to protect the football. I think we got to get our offense going, score some points, and play good defense. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, protecting the football and getting some turnovers can certainly help. Best of luck. Thank you, Thank Coach. You. Yeah, Missouri, one of the leaders in the nation in turnover margin. Great football Saturday. Yesterday was almost like baseball weather, but it has dropped a good 20 degrees over the last 24 hours, and the wind is going to be a factor, gusting better than 25 miles an hour. So Missouri won the toss, and I don't blame them. Deferred because they wanted the win for the fourth quarter. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Well, you saw the wind get blown off the tee. Uh, the wind blew the football off the tee on the opening kickoff. Have to have a holder because that wind is so strong, and it's a... It's a swirling wind down there on the field. It's a tough one. It's going to affect throwing, kicking, all phases. 
Starting corner, Shredania Mitchell is going to hold it for Adam Grosset, the redshirt freshman out of Liberty, Missouri. And we are now underway in Lincoln on a knuckleball. It is going to be brought go, go, back go, go. by Tierra Green. Green slowed down and popped, crossing the 20 as he goes down near the 24-yard line. David Overstreet, the first one down there, the nickelback for Missouri on the hit. And offensively for the Cornhuskers, well, he's got 14 TD passes, but 13 interceptions. So a lot of guys have problems with this system on Sundays, and Joe Daly is trying to do it in a hurry over the first seven games on Saturdays. Our Kia Saris starting offensive 11. We'll look at the line after the first snap. It's still a big group, as usual, for Nebraska, but they don't try to pound you like they did before. Is Corey Ross, the junior from Denver, is the single to the backfield. From the 24, Daly on the quick out. Complete to none, the true freshman out of Houston Cypress Falls High School. So a quick gain out to the 30, a pickup of six. So all of a sudden, an offensive line that used to 75% of the time, run block, now pass block, better than 50% of the time. Erickson, Coke, Mann, Anderson, Everway. There's Anderson's experience on the right side. Corey Ross in the backfield with Crewell. Matt Herrian, phenomenal tight end. Man, the wide receivers, LaFleur and Pilkington. On second and four, it's Ross. Huge hole into the secondary and a first down across the 40 to the 42. Nino Williams is safety along with Jason Simpson, the other safety. One of the top tacklers for the Tigers. You know, Joel, it's a misnomer. The West Coast offense throws every snap. They're running the ball for almost 182 yards a game. And I played the West Coast offense. One year we led the NFL in total offense. We also led it in rushing with this system. This system is a built-in balanced attack. Run the ball and throw the ball. Don't, don't disregard that running game. Well, they empty the backfield as they put Ross out wide. Oh, Erickson, too yeah. early there. Offensive line lifting up. He was going to pull. It was going to be a crack block down, and he was going to pull. Right the snap. Ball start. Ten. Did it too early. Penalty still first down. Take a look at what Erickson does here. You know, he's going to pull. He's got a tight end going to be blocking down here, and he goes to pull. Left guard is going to pull as well. They left too early. Got to remember that snap count. That's the most important thing. So they take it back to the 37. Keep Ross is a deep single. Tight ends are like H-backs in their system. Phillips lifting up, and he's the wham man on the play as Ross breaks it into the secondary again. And they're lucky to get him in the midfield strike. Nino Williams saw what could have been down the middle for a score. So the Missouri defense, Kia Sierra 11 for the Tigers, had a very good defensive unit. At least coming in, Jackson, Ellison, Mosley, and Bill up front. Ellison and Mosley have been phenomenal for them this year. Sweat in the middle, Kenny and Bacon. Kenny, the leading tackler for the Tigers. Mitchell, four picks. That leads the Big 12. Marcus King in the other corner. And Jason Simpson, their second leading tackler. He's already been in the plays too often. So is Nino Williams, their other safety. Now it's Brandon Jackson. And Jackson battling his way for a first down. He's got it all the way down to the Missouri 42 with a true freshman from Horn Lake, Mississippi. This guy is really helping on kick returns. So they're pumped up early on homecoming weekend. Uh, you know, it's interesting how Nebraska, the, the plays, Joe Daly goes to the sideline and talks to Callahan to get the play. And he doesn't send messengers. He doesn't really communicate with headset in the helmet with a communication device. He goes and gets it verbally. And I'll tell you, the Nebraska offensive line doing a good job rocket blocking the second level, the linebacker level. Take the toss to Ross. Daly's oh. got a man deflected and almost intercepted. So he went for Pilkington. Overstreet. It should have been picked off, though. Overstreet got his hand on Yes, the nickelback did a good job to read the quarterback. Yeah, and, and there he is. Watch him, watch him right here. He's going to be out. He's going to get, get, get his hands up, and the ball splits his hands. And, you know, Missouri is playing very close to the line of scrimmage with their safety. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of packages Nebraska utilizing that West Coast offense to attack the middle of the field a little bit. Now there's a, a, a center fielder, safety center fielder on this day. They slide the tight end in motion. Ross again into the secondary. Huge gain inside the 25, and he's got a first down at the 20-yard line. Shredania Mitchell again 
had to made the stop every time we talk about a member of the secondary and that's the senior from Arlington Texas making hits Dave that's a problem early yeah, it really is and Ross is a slasher he's lost 28 pounds over the last couple of seasons this guy in his last 11 games has got six 100 yard rushing days watch the offensive line do their job up front little zone blocking here and actually it's a counter little pull and trap right here log inside watch the receiver on the edge get his block excellent job right there good job of getting it done by Terrence Nunn beautiful play Geyser was the seal on that block this time Jackson can't get out of the backfield he in fact loses a yard maybe even two outside of the 21 near the 22 yard line now he's coming into the game for the Cornhuskers well you know they, they want to take care of the uh, of take care of the football ball security is the biggest thing they are minus 11 in the turnover department thrown 17 interceptions Missouri has 13 interceptions second most in the country Olay that means missed tackles. They had 33 missed tackles against Kansas State. They want to slow down Brad Smith, obviously. They want to block Brian Smith on third down. This guy leads the Big 12 in sacks with six quarterback sacks. He's had five in the last three games. It'll be second and a dozen. Fake the counter, shoot it over the head of Pilkington. As Daly just never squared, really sat, and it sailed on him. So a huge third down for the Missouri defense. They have not given up a point yet this season on a first, on a first right. possession. Right over the first seven games of the year. Yep, and that's that's a phenomenal uh, scenario. In four straight games, five of the last seven games, they've had a takeaway on the first drive. They've not only prevented a score, they've taken the football away. That's a that's a big, big plus for Matt Elberflus and, and of course, Gary Pinkle, the, uh, the head coach. But no points in that first possession. And like I said, five of the last seven games, a takeaway. Timeout is going to be called. And it comes from the Nebraska bench. We'll do the same. So Nebraska will come Nebraska. back trying to get points early against one of the better defensive units in the nation. But they're facing a third and 12. Footage of Kellen Winslow as a Tiger with Bill Bradley at quarterback. James Wilder at running yeah. back. Did yeah. they have some talent? They really did. I mean, great career Wilder had with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, of course, Kellen Winslow, Hall of Fame. That says it all. Tier Green taking the toss sweep on the short side of the field and won't get out of the backfield. What a stop coming up. Uh, and Jackson on that side, the sophomore from Wichita. Tigers freshman of the year last season along with defensive end Brian Smith. He was on top of it. Well, what they're trying to do here is crack and pull those linemen. They had a penalty on this uh, on this play earlier. Lockdown, just a tremendous play. Roll off that crack back block. He just spun right out of there. Jackson, excellent play right there, stuffing that. Sandro DeAngelis, 41-yard field goal try into the win. Enough. Wow. Yes. So Missouri gives up points on an opponent's first possession for the first time this year. And that is the longest field goal of the season for that little guy, the senior from Niagara Falls, Ontario. A 41-yarder from DeAngelis. And the Huskers homecoming weekend on top of the Tigers by three. Tigers ready to get the football for the first time. And what an impressive start for Nebraska. Moving it well on the ground, not through the air. That's where they fell into problems on their first down tries, as did Angelus will kick it away. A little pooch over to the far side. It is going to be Alex Woodley calling for the fair catch. And he's got it. As he'll put it down at the 29 near the 30. Well, it was 10 years ago. What a reunion they've had over the last couple of nights here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I listened on the drive in yesterday, Dave, Tommy Fraser and all the guys in town. Huskers winning their first national championship for head coach Tom Osborne, and they did it. It was the Orange Bowl, but let's face it, you're matching up with Miami on New Year's night. It was like a road game for them. Absolutely. And they completed a 13-0 record. It's just an incredible football team, and, and it's great. It's the 10-year reunion, and they were all here, and they all, last night, and they're all here for today's game. Marcus Wood starting tailback will get it on first down taking the stack out to about the 33 near the 34. Bernard Thomas the senior from Palo Alto along with Barrett Root their leading tackler all-time career leader in stops on the hit. So gain of about four for the Tigers. This was the scene before the game and Tom Osborne out there with his unit. They had a celebration here last night. It's been going for a couple of days. Tom Osborne's last five seasons at Nebraska, they were 60 wins, three losses. This year, they're four and three. Amazing changing of the guard in a different era. 
Pocket holds up initially for Smith. Now can he manufacture and he does across the 36 to the 37. Rude again. You'll hear that. Well, the boos in the background. Well, those are rudes in the background. So it's going to be third and about three. Now offensively, the 11 out there for the Tigers, their all-time leader in career yardage. And now tied the career best with 39 touchdown passes. That happened last week. Clay Group Palmer, Speaker, Giannino, and Pat Rapp. They've got some experience back despite losing Dreggy. Woods, Cisse, Coffee the wide out with Bomboga. And Haskins, the third wide receiver. They have two to each side out of the gun. Smith. The time and the receiver. He's got the first down. Going across the 30. Equor Equu. The sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Boy, it's got to be tough for Mike Kelly. The play-by-play -play <laughs> voice of the Tigers, doesn't it? <laughs> Say that five times fast on a regular basis. Moore, Smith, Adams, and Bernard Thomas. Defensively for the Huskers. Rude, the man in the middle of their all-time career leader in stop Severs and Bradley on the outside. Corners, McPherson and Washington experience there, and the Bullock Twins are their safeties. Marcus Woods again in the backfield as Smith didn't panic at all. He showed real composure in the backfield in completing that third down pass. Woods trying to spin it wide and stopped for a loss of a yard and a half, too. Bradley got to him the strong side backer. Now, coming into the contest, trying to win this stadium for the first time in 78. What do the Tigers have to do? Well, the thing, the barometer for them, 175 yards rushing. When they get 175 or more, they're 16 and 1 since the beginning of 2002. 1 and 13 when they don't. Yakety yak, that means yards after catch, yards after contact. Give them some big chunk plays. And then third down. And you're successful on third down when you have first and second down efficiency and play a full 60 minutes, not just half a game. Well, maybe this is just what Missouri needs, trailing early. Right. After giving up a 17 to nothing lead, and we've got movement up front, a false start for the Tigers. It was thrown quickly by the umpire well, Nebraska, and the linesman. Nebraska shifted. Right of the snap, false start, offense, number 56, second down. Replay second down. Well, they've got Hal Dowden's microphone working now. The uh, Nebraska shifted up front, and as a result of the reaction to the shift by the defense, you can't move. Howard Brissett, the offensive lineman, moved in there. You can't, uh, no can do. Missouri should be able to score today. Everybody else has against Nebraska. Over the last three, they've given up an average of 47 a contest. They're 81st in the nation in scoring defense. Smith bottled up at the backfield, can't get out. Another loss for the Tigers. Barrett Rude making the hit. Well, the Black Shirts want to rebound. They want to rally defensively because last week, Kansas State ran the football for 294 yards. On the season, they're still giving up less than 100 yards a game, 99.3, which is 13th in the country. And the opposition only averaging 2.9 per rush. But Kansas State figured out a way to slice them up, and they want to... Uh, Rebound and make some adjustments. Kevin Costco, the defensive coordinator, good early start here for he and his troops. So now third and better than 16, almost 17. Moving the pocket by design. Smith on the run, not close. Wally Muhammad flushing him out of the pocket. The junior from Bloomfield, New Jersey. And Smith never had a chance. Well, good activity and aggressiveness out of the corn huskers moving the pocket change the launch point time to throw the football good coverage nowhere to go with the ball down the field that's just good overall team defense by nebraska and they're showing that quickness they've got some speed out in the field defensively themselves santino ben nico is waiting for the punt from the walk on matt heinous he's back inside the 20. and close with the wobbler and room for Panico. Across the 30, only to the 31. So good punt coverage. Justin Scott, one of the first ones down there for the Tigers. Yeah, Nebraska's going to have it in solid field position, though, outside of their own 31 near the 32. We have a triple header. It all starts here. And then coming up later today, Stanford against UCLA. Is it going to be a second half of the season for UCLA like last year? After dropping another one last week, or can they turn it around at home? That's up next right after we send it out to the West Coast to the Rose Bowl for the Bruins and the Stanford Cardinal. And then Texas Tech and Kansas State, the late game, and, and Missouri's next week opponent, Kansas State. Kansas State has beaten Nebraska head-to-head. -head. They win tonight against Texas Tech. Big matchup for them against Missouri in Columbia next week. They'll take it to Ross, give it on the reverse. 
coming over past the 40 yard line. It's after Willie the Amos. 42, Amos, the okay, wide receiver. And they go up at 6-7 deep in the wide receiver spot as they put it down to the 39. Dr. Pepper, game break time. Let's head back to Mike Goldberg. Mike. Joel, two weeks ago, Purdue was number five. Nothing here, Mike, as Nebraska's got it back once again. Daily pocket protection off the fingertips of Kaiser. He is tied in. He was going to take a shot anyway from Shardania Mitchell. Mitchell almost got his fifth interception. He's got four interceptions on the season, tied for six most in, in the country, tied for the lead in the Big 12. A little bit of a, he's the motion man, he's the receiver off his hands. Mitchell can't quite make a play on it. That's a catchable ball, though. Got to make that catch and move the chains. Now you face that third and short. Freewald into the game and eight back on the right side as they keep Ross in the backfield. Now third and less than three. Daly moving the pocket quickly out and the hit. Incomplete, they say. It was for Terrence Nunn. Mitch Huge pop by Mitchell again. Man. What a season the senior from Arlington, Texas is having. That's he and he moved to the corner last year. Don't forget after spending a couple of seasons at wide receiver. Yeah, he's got the great uh, ball skills because he's a former wide up. But look at him hit here. <laughs> I mean, that's a stick, and that's what dropping a ball on second down does for you. A defender makes a great play on third down, you got to punt the football. You never know when your opportunities present themselves to make plays. You can't botch your opportunities. That second down drop caused the problem on this sequence of plays. Thompson Umbaga is back for the Tigers in a terrible punt from Cook, but he takes a Nebraska roll. Down to the Missouri 29, but it was into the wind. We've talked about the wind at 25, 30 miles an hour. Huskers by three. Tigers get it for the second time when we come back. Back in 72, won the Lombardi and Outland Award. Played against him in the National Football League when he was a New York Giant. Great, great defensive lineman, and they've had a bunch of them in Husker territory here. Well, right now, their defense has slowed down Missouri, at least at the outset. They gave up 45 points to Kansas State last week. Brad Smith throwing on first down from his own 29. Good coverage downfield. Smith floating it perfectly. No, just off the mark for Umboga. Well, the senior from Grand Prairie, Texas. Tough touch pass. It'll be second and ten as we check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joel, you guys touch on it. The wind conditions. You know, up above the goalposts, the flags are blowing pretty good, but down on the field, they're gusting as well. Over 25 mile an hour winds right here. That will definitely be a factor, guys. And Knoxie, on that play, it looked like the wind took the ball on Brad Smith a little bit. But with you wind, when the wind is at your back, Joel, that's when you feel pressure to score points. Nebraska ran the ball well into the wind. They didn't try to throw it as much. Missouri's got to score with the wind for the back. And Umboga the pass down. for Umboga. There was contact, but they're saying that well, the defensive back on that side, Umboga. Kellen Houston, didn't get there too soon, the senior from Ankeny, Iowa. Yeah, Umboga looked like he just collapsed when he when he pivoted to run his route. To finish his route, his feet just went out from under, and there he goes. He just slips on the field turf, so give an assist to the field turf there. So now for the Tigers, it's going to be third and ten from their own 29. One first down. They had a punt for their first possession. They wanted first and second down efficiency. Third and ten's not getting it done. The dump off for Woods. The blocking is out in front, and he's wow. got the first down. Look out. Marcus Woods to the 40. They have an angle on him, and they knock him out of bounds near their 20. Touchdown saving tackle by Daniel Bullets. Boy, just an outstanding block. By Giannino out there, the big offensive lineman got a pancake block, and that set it up for the screen pass to go for a big yards. Marcus Woods takes advantage of it. Watch number 57 in the white jersey. Here he comes. Watch him. Boop. Pancake. See you later. And here goes Marcus Woods down the sideline. Don't forget, he's getting the start due to the suspension of Damian Nash. So now. The true freshman is coming into the game for the first time as a Tiger out of Rockhurst High School in Kansas City, Tony Temple. So Tigers have it to the 23 of the Huskers. Temple's first career carry. Man, he's chopped down after a gain of a yard. So good penetration up front. Carriker, the sophomore, Kennewick, Washington, 
in on that hit. And Tony Temple, one of the most recruited running backs in the country. Last year, they decided after seven games, Coach Pinkle told us he talked to him, and Temple wanted to burn the year. He wanted to burn the redshirt year. Yeah, and, and that's uh, that's the ripple effect of the decision to suspend Nash. You know, Temple uh, Temple gets involved, and of course, the, the guy that was toting it early on was Woods. But Temple's got a little bit more strength and, and power. Play fake. Held the linebackers. It's over shot for the wide receiver Sean Coffey is character pop Smith at the end of the play Well not in the red zone yet, but on the cusp of the red zone and when you get close to these scoring zone opportunities It's when you have to be very efficient on first and second down now you find yourself third and long and the field is compressed Now you're gonna have to do something creative and maybe a, 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 a drag pattern crossing patterns trying to pick defenders because speed's not as big an issue when the field's compressed like this change of direction quickness designer more important kind of surprised Rucker and Cisse have not been involved they combined for 40 catches the two tight ends and a quick one on the outside nothing doing down to the 25 bullocks yeah. taking care of Bo Veeman the third tailback they're going with they went to the screen pass again Joel Daniel Bullock said no 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 baby no not this time so now gonna have to settle for a field goal opportunity remember wind at the back makes a, a big difference Tantarelli is two for four from 30 to 39 yards one for three from 40 to 49 yards on the season now you see his distance easily inside of that at 42 trying to tie things up its way and did he push it yes okay. he did push it right so Missouri fails to capitalize on the 48 yard catch and run by Woods well DeAngelis converted his first field goal of over 40 yards on the season into the wind and the flip side of it is a miss Tantarelli shorter distance with the wind at his back misses wide right and he's like oh come on stay on line oh son of a gun I pushed it Huskers get it back there, up by three in America's number one free game show. Back tomorrow's, they're going to be taking a look at Dante Culpepper's phenomenal season. Already three games with five scores. And his chance at rewriting the record books as he's already started that, plus Colt Star. Peyton Manning going 10 yards with Terry Bradshaw is on first down. They give it off to Ross. Nothing available on that side of the field. So it'll bring up second and long. Another nice stop over street. The nickel back in there. And a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check back in with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Joel unranked. Hard to believe. Yeah. After the play fake. Harry, first grab of the day. Very talented tight end, but a good close on the stop over there on Matt Harrington. As he's down just across the 30-yard line. Well, Missouri's strength. Joel is rally and run to the football defensively naked boot like you saw Joe Daly go over to Callahan and get the play no no communication eliminate all those variables just directly from my mouth to your ear there's no no uh, possibility of any distortion in communication and the naked boot like the Herring was nice on second down now on third down a little more than four to play in the quarter pocket holds up for Daly plenty of time here comes backside pressure and he throws it away so the Tigers do a great job again defensively, and that is not a shock. They're number one in the Big 12 in total defense, 15th in the nation, and it's still confusing for Joe Daly. As he said before, at the outset of the season, Coach Callahan would call plays, and I wouldn't understand him. I'd have to go over there. It's getting a little bit better. Yeah, it's even tough for him to, to communicate the plays. Watch the protection by the offensive line, and then watch in the secondary. Watch him plaster the routes. Look at the protection. Watch him plaster the routes here. Nowhere to go with the football. With the wind in his face, another wobbler knuckleball from Cook taking a Husker roll. So that takes him Boca out of the return game. But now Missouri, their best field position to start a drive. They've got it first and 10 to their own 38, trailing three to nothing. Can they capitalize? They just missed a 42 yard field goal. Which uh, was. A lot easier distance with that win without a doubt at the back. And it's he, almost like he was in the mile high city. Yeah, he had no problem getting the trajectory in the distance, but the accuracy, the most important thing, you got to split the uprights and he didn't split them. And then you look on the other side of it, DeAngelis 0 for 3 from 40 to 49 yards on the season. He kicks a 41 42 yarder into the wind to give him the 3 nothing lead. True freshman Tony Temple. Kansas City at 5 10 195 is going to be in the backfield. Smith out of the gun. So dangerous in this situation his first two years. Not as much this year. A bullet, though, 
And a low grab by Mboga. Good yardage on first down of about four, almost five in front of Chad Seavers, the outside backer on that side. You know, the first down line all brought to you this afternoon by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. You know, Joel, Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator for Missouri, he scripts the first 15 plays, so he's getting near the conclusion of the scripted deal. The second half, he's going to script his first 10 this game as well. Temple bending it wide. Couldn't get to the corner, though. Stuart Bradley, the strong side backer out of Salt Lake City, a sophomore, collared him big time. Size so speed there. Talk about running to the football and closing to the football. Bradley was big time. Both defenses doing a great job of staying on their feet, separating from blocks, and rallying to the football. A bunch of gang tackling going on out there. More than one jersey in support of a teammate making the tackle. So another third down coming up for the Tigers. They are two of four so far. Out of the gun with a little less than five. Moving the pocket with a waggle. Man, not close to the intended target. So Smith going to Eckler Eckler. Well, Joel, you, you called it. They, they move the pocket, change the launch point, but when the receiver gets plastered down the football field again, good coverage, and Brad Smith can only throw to that side of the field. When you, The danger is when you move the pocket, you can't throw back to the other sideline. I mean, you're basically saying to Nebraska, I'm going to throw to this third of the field, and they covered it well. Hannes will punt with the wind at his back. For Santino Bonico. He waits inside the 15-yard line. Man of beauty. But room for Hannes. Good play downfield. First one down for Missouri, tripped him up and just barely, but enough, Alex Woodley got the job done. So a 42-yard punt. Man, let's head back to Mike Goldberg again with a Dr. Pepper game break. Little bit. And that one and Mike, that both teams are going to try to stop the run. Who throws the football better? I think it's Oklahoma with the Heisman Trophy winner. Jackson. And grabbed immediately and tossed down across the 25. It'll be C.J. Mosley. The tackle, the junior from Fort Leonard with Missouri. Second team, all Big 12 last year on the solo stop. Gain of about three. So with two plus left in the first quarter, Missouri's had great opportunities. Okay. In fact, the last time, David, they had it at their own 38. Wasted super field position, three and out with a punt. I think a big key to the game was Nebraska's ability to run the ball well in that first drive when they were going into the wind. And they got them a field goal into the wind as well. Little counter action this time for Jackson. Good yardage. And he's got a first down. Kenny caught up with him, but it was too late. Now we're looking at a true freshman, as I mentioned. We have 59 and 40 yard kickoff returns against Baylor. Well, this kid's got some size. Six feet, 220 pounds. They really like him. They really like Terrence Nunn. These are two true freshmen. One at running back, one at wide receiver. The future is bright in the West Coast offense. Just shy of the 35, a first down. Battling as well, not much there for Jackson. There is penetration for Missouri. Dietrich Harrington, the sophomore, punched through. He's out of Mexico, Missouri. Home of the military academy. And it's second and nine. Neither team really doing the job they wanted to do for the most part on first and second down. First and second down execution and efficiency make third down easy. Both teams have had too many third and long situations. Here off schedule again is Nebraska, second and basically a long nine. Yeah, they got a first down. Yeah, that's more you can say than their last two possessions when they went three and out with a punt. Little slip screen to the wide receiver, none, the motion man. And he's hit by Nino Williams as he's dropped shy of the 40 at the 39. Good job blocking by Mulkey, the wide receiver on Jason Simpson out there, but the inside out pursuit this game finished means it. So much to Missouri. Trying to win at Nebraska for the first time since 1978. And don't forget the last time Mizzou won a conference title, Dan Devine was head coach. They went to the Orange Bowl and matched up with Penn State. It was 1969, the old Big Eight. And, and the last time they beat Nebraska, Joel, back to back seasons, you have to go to 1973, 1974. So here's the program all the way back for Mizzou. 
If you want to take advantage of Nebraska, you better do it this year. Daly on the run and almost a great grab by Grant Mulkey. Got one hand on the ball, the former walkout. He's out of Arlington, Texas. Donya Mitchell with an angle. Made it a difficult throw for Joe Daly. Well, Mulkey, nice little uh, shallow cross. Daly just not quite accurate enough with throwing into the wind. Here comes Mulkey on the shallow cross. He's got an advantage. And it's that win to not be as accurate as he wanted to be. Um, Boga waiting for the Sam Cook punt. And he is only about 30 yards from the line of scrimmage, knowing that it's going to be uh -oh. most likely another knuckleball and a block. A block for the Tigers as it's grabbed. Brandon Massey. Yes, yeah. Massey got in early with his safety. A Man, flag. a flag at the end of the play. So Hal Dowden and his crew discuss it. Unsportsmanlike conduct. It'll go Our against family. Nebraska. First down. So the market off against Nebraska. Now Missouri in great shape after the black block by Massey. They got close already in the first quarter. So it's not a shock that he got in. And it comes with two seconds left in the first 15. So Missouri is going to be very close to the red zone to start the possession at the 26. It did not delay Massey enough, as you saw. He just lays out, and you have to take an aiming point, not at the foot, but in front of the foot. And you get a hand on the punt. It's an outstanding job done by Massey. And then the penalty gives him a short field. Smith out of the gun. First down, Missouri. Should be the final snap of the quarter. And moving the pocket again by design. Smith in trouble and throwing at the feet of his target. Rude in his face. And what an ending for the Nebraska defense. So it starts out a day dominated by the two defensive units. That's the end of the first 15 minutes of play with Nebraska on a field goal on top of Missouri. Three to nothing. Football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra welcomes you back and there's the Heisman 2001 winner Eric Crouch they thought he was going to be a defensive back of the NFL St. Louis is no well about that and Missouri Tiger fans would love to forget this play where he was almost sacked for a safety yeah he goes 95 yards a little serpentine action we had this game it was a, this was a signature run this run basically won the Heisman trophy for Eric Crouch boy when he finished that was one tired young man yeah we are ready for the start of the second quarter, Brad Smith, quarterback, run all the way by design down to the 23. Dropped by Stuart Bradley. In fact, as we begin the second quarter in this Nebraska defense, I'd mentioned they've given up an average of 47 a contest over the last three. That's the first time all year that they have held an opponent scoreless in the first quarter. Well, actually, you got to go back to opening day against Western Illinois. They did it on opening day and not since. And that shows Missouri struggles a little bit at the, uh, at the up in the offensive side of the football. And now, even though they've got the short field, they're into the win. And their field goal kicker, their place kicker, missed. Tantarelli missed with the wind at his back. Now he's going to be kicking into it. So now on third, a little more than six, almost seven. Great pocket protection for Smith on the out. Just out of the reach of his wide receiver, his tight end, actually. They finally went to Rucker. The redshirt freshman from St. Joe. Now this could affect Gary Pinkle's decision. My guy missed with the wind that is back from 42. This one's going to be, oh, what, 40, 49, or 39, or 40 with the wind in his face. This may be four down territory for him, but he decides to send the uh, field goal unit out, out there. You sound so confident about Tandarelli's chances here. When, you know, when you when you miss when you miss with the wind in your, ba your back, it has to make the Tigers coach think, and he was thinking about it. Let's see if he can uh, make amends here. Restitution. It is going to be a 40-yard attempt into the wind. Good percentage coming in, eight of 12, but now eight of 13. Clean exchange. The line drive works. Ooh. <laughs> Everybody wants to kick into the wind today. He was hooking that bad boy, but he got it inside that left upright. So a 40-yarder for Tannarelli, one of his longest of the season. And the Tigers tie it up in the opening minutes of the second quarter. Tigers didn't do much offensively, but got a punt block. 
And that was the difference setting up at the 26 of the Cornhuskers. Got three on a 39-yard field goal. As Cross, it's going to kick it away. Over to the far side it goes. Brandon Jackson waits, takes it to the 10. Jackson oh. with a couple of blocks. Look out, past the 40. Oh. Slow down by Crossett. The kicker saves it for Missouri. It's a great play by the kicker. Played off the block and made the shoestring tackle. That's a big time job by Crossett. Jackson was, he had golden goal posts in sight. Good job by the wedge. Nice kick out block. And Jackson makes his decision and gets upfield quickly. But boy, that's just a heck of an effort by Crossett. Watch him play linebackers. Get off the block, get down, get the head across. Jackson's going to get dogged a little bit in film, getting tackled one-on-one -on, -one on the open field by the kicker. <laughs> we'll have plenty more opportunities. Yes, As only a freshman. Slide the tight end, give it to Ross, gaping hole for Ross. Breaks the tackle as he got away from Oboe Street. And gets it inside the 48, near the 47. In a little more than four. Nino Williams finally got him in the secondary. And we got uh, Caspers here. I know you're ready for Halloween. It's a ghostly deal, right? And an angel, ghost and an angel right next to each other. Only, only at Lincoln, Nebraska, as Halloween approaches. Corey Ross averaging over 11 yards a lug in the first quarter. He was the man, 34 yards on three rushes. Brandon Jackson takes over the backfield now with Prewald, the fullback. He's not been in there much. Daly changing the play at the line. Play clock, play clock. Will they get it off in time? Barely. And trouble for Daly. And now he just throws it away. It should be grounding, yeah, and it will be from Hal Downton. Yep. That was an easy call. He was still in the pocket, and he threw it away to avoid the sack. Henry's sweat in his face. Van Simpson, in fact, as well. He spun away from sweat, and then came Simpson. That's a loss of yards and down. It's like a sack. It's equivalent to the sack, intentional grounding, because he was throwing away to avoid the sack. Just a call, intentional grounding. Cleaver in the area. Down, spot, we second down. Loss of down and yards, no receiver in the area. Joe Daly, here comes the pressure, and, and, and it's going to be immediate. Unblocked, up the gap it comes. Daly's in trouble, a little athletic move. Another one in his face, just throw it away. First sweat, then Simpson, and it paid off. Simpson is a safety, free safety, but he's playing in the box quite often from Missouri because they have a nickel package on the field because Nebraska employs three, four, and even five wides regularly. And Gary Pinkle told us that Simpson's up on the line like a linebacker most sure. of the time. Here he is right here. He's in coverage, but he's in the slot, and here he comes. And he gets situation Ooh, almost. It. Just missed it, and that time out of the pocket, throwing it back to the line with more pressure in his face. So you looked at Simpson again, almost getting to Daly. Daly gets a lot of miles in during the game, running to and from Callahan to get the play. Nice job, athletic ability there to, to shake Simpson, though, and then just throws it away. But Daly, back and forth, back and forth to the sideline to the huddle before he even gets the play called. He's in great shape. Rombogo waiting as Cook Ooh. has the wind and hands it up very high. Amboga stays away from it, and it cost Missouri about five yards, maybe a little bit more. Always wonder why guys, I and mean, there's a senior wide receiver, that cost them about eight, ten yards. Instead of outside of the 20, they'll have it back at their 14. So a 44-yard punt, good roll for Nebraska. And Amboga stayed away. With college football, returning next week first, the same Missouri Tigers at home taking on the Wildcats of Kansas State and Stanford, matching up with Arizona State, and all be followed by the number one team in the nation, USC and Matt Leinert facing Oregon State. It all begins a triple header, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 out on the West Coast on FSN. Missouri had 62 yards offense in the first quarter, Joel. 48 yards of it with a screen pass to Woods. They had one big play and then struggled. So now Missouri with their worst field position to start a drive. Smith on a double move and a throw that nobody was going to get to out of bounds. So he went for Sean Coffey, but the double move didn't do anything to the defensive back on that side of the field, Lornell McPherson. Yeah, McPherson was not fooled whatsoever, and throwing that ball into the wind, when you have to hang it up there, the wind's going to play tricks with it. Well, we talked about first downs for Missouri this year. Frequently, it's second and long or third and long for Missouri. And, and really, both teams have struggled in that regard. Second, first and second down efficiency 
are going to be the key to third down success in this game, just like every game. Smith out of the gun on second and ten. Looked originally over to the near side. And throws it away. Was out of bounds. Coffee again the target. McPherson on that side. He had a better shot than the wide receiver. It was thrown into the boundary anyway. Man, it's going to be second and ten for the Tigers at their own 14. And right now, if they don't pick up any yardage, it's going to be plus territory. You would have to think punting into the wind. Nebraska will start in Mizzou territory. Well, special teams have been a big factor in this game already. Missouri gets the block punt. Brandon Massey gets a deflected punt and gives Missouri a short field to tie the game up. Let's see if uh, Nebraska will answer. On third down, up to the 20 yard line goes Equo Equo. Didn't have a chance for the first down, though. No blocking out there as Barrett Rude came over from his middle linebacker spot. And another three and out with a punt for the Tigers. Well, Barrett Rude, when you think about a guy that's setting an all time tackle record at Nebraska, that's pretty impressive because uh, there's been a lot of great football players here, and this guy is the leader of the pack right now. Tremendous in terms of his preparation, understanding of the game. His keys always taken to the play, very intelligent. Sophomore from Branson, Missouri, Matt Haynes punting in the stiff breeze. Knuckleball. Wobbler over to the near side, and a Nebraska rolls. It hit at about the 43, bounced backwards, and it'll spot it out at the 42. So a great shape for Nebraska, all even at three. And we go back to the 1992 matchup. First career start for Nebraska quarterback Tommy Frazier. And not a bad debut at all. Three touchdowns in a 34-24 Nebraska victory. Downstairs we go. Nazi, what's the latest? Okay, thank you, Joe. You may recognize this guy, Tommy Frazier, who led Nebraska to that national championship in 94-95. Having the 94 reunion the last couple days, what's that been like for you, Tommy? Well, it's been a lot of fun. There's a lot of guys I haven't seen in the last 10 years. And watching them come back in and being able to sit down and see what they're doing in their lives has been a lot of fun. Real quick, your thoughts about this West Coast offense now employed by Nebraska? Well, I think, I think it's a tra transition stage that it's not going to be perfect the first year, but once they go out and start recruiting and the kids that they have now start really getting involved and learning the offense even more, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a good system for, for the university right now. All right, Tom, enjoy the rest of the game. Appreciate it, bud. Well, I'll tell you what, Noxie, nobody executed the option better than that guy, Tommy Frazier. Now they're going to go to the West Coast offense. You talked about a diametrically a pro, a, opposed mentality, you know? <laughs> You love it. It's great. Second and three. Need to get to the 32. Corey Ross hit coming out of the backfield. No gain as Jason Simpson all over the place on the line of scrimmage as we check in with Mike Goldberg once again at a Dr. Pepper game break. Mike. Well, let's go back. It'll be interesting if he can get back in after what happened at the tail end of the game. It wasn't a great statistical game and then fumbled it away in their loss. Last now on the toss sweep, Ross, can he turn it? No. Backside, got him. What a play by James Kinney, the leading tackler for the Tigers. And he's 30 tackles away from the all-time record going into today's game. Does Coach Callahan kick the field goal with the, with the wind in his back, or does he go for it on fourth down? Let's take a look at the action up front. It starts with the defensive lineman keeping blockers off so the linebackers can flow. That's exactly what Kenny does. Kenny's a little bit nicked up with a knee problem, but boy, he is something else. He has had a great career for the Missouri Tigers. And Bill Callahan wants to think it over. Do I go with the field goal, wind at my back, or fourth and short? Do I make this four down territory? What's a man to do? Well, it's an official's timeout now for an injury over on the far sideline in front of the Husker bench. So they need about three and a half yards. Or they put him down. Actually, that was a great spot. They put him down at the 34. Nebraska's already gone for it on fourth down this year. When you've gone for it 13 times already, you know it's been a struggle. Yep. And they have 13 times, and they've hit on six of those 13. And there's the left ankle, left leg, or left knee, whatever they're checking. It's a lower, lower leg injury, though. You hate to see these kind of things. Hope you're not digging in there for one of those air casts. You hate to see that. See what happens. Rolls up on his leg right there. Rolls up on the back of his leg. That's what usually happens. Matt Harry in the tight end. Gets that left ankle rolled up on. Boy, you'd hate to lose a guy of his caliber making a block on the sideline. We are here in Lincoln on homecoming weekend. Some of the great names. Dean Steinkohler, Dave Remington, who was an Outland Trophy winner as well. Outland and Lombardi, yeah. Right, over on the far side, though. A first-team All-Big 12 or an All-American candidate for the Huskers this year. Their tight end, Matt Harrion. 
And you talked about it. Yeah, he, he was, was just an innocent victim, actually, is the way the play rolled on the back of his leg. And that's what happens a lot of times. You know, you're making a block on the on the edge, and, and let's run it a little bit. And as he as he's blocking, blocking, watch, he plants that left ankle, left foot right here, and watch as, as people roll, whoa, right there. He just gets caught up, just gets caught up right there. And that ankle, that ankle bends from the inside out. It rolls over where the ball of the foot is, is pushed down to the ground, and your foot and ankle roll to the left, outside of your leg. Not a good, not a good injury. Matt Herrian, who is key, key. They're bringing the uh, the, the cart out to get him off the field. I, this this one's not pretty. And Matt Herrian driving, 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 running back, and tackler Corey Ross. Oh, and he knows right. Look at him yelping all already. He knows he's in serious trouble. Kenny and Ross both uh, end up rolling up on the on the back of his uh, leg and that left ankle, left foot, not good. And I had brought up to Bill Callahan because I noticed that Harrion had not been that much of a factor. He was catching passes, but they weren't finding him in the red zone. And right. I said to Bill Callahan, I said he hadn't caught a touchdown pass since week number two. And he goes, that's going to be an area of emphasis for us. They've got to get Harrion involved once again. And they've been excellent in the red zone. Uh, Nebraska as a team has scored 74% of the time. They've scored touchdowns in the red zone. And Matt Harrion, even if he doesn't catch, he's a factor. And you have to... You know, double him and do some right. things in the red zone to take him away, and it creates opportunities for others. And that's why losing a guy of his caliber becomes a, a real, real problem. And this isn't uh, this isn't pretty. Look at look at how quiet. And, uh, it's, and it, this is seventy. Let's remind everybody: it's seventy-seven thousand fans plus for the two hundred and sixty-seventh consecutive time. And shedding a tear right there, and, and and rightfully so. I mean, you hate to see a guy of his caliber, any player, any football player, and all his teammates standing around him. You know, there's. There's silent prayer going on right now because obviously this one uh, this one isn't isn't pretty. Uh, I, you know I don't want to speculate, but don't. I've, I've been in those situations. You have dislocations that are right. ugly, and you know you have to reduce the uh, the foot back on the ankle and those kind of things take some time. And this one took so long. I think we had something ugly like that, like a a dislocation that had to be stabilized. And well, I'm going to cross my fingers and go the other extreme and just hope it's a turned ankle. No, well, I hope yeah, so too. Something like that. But boy, it's uh, to take him, uh, take him off in the cart, and he he has that air cast on, and obvious in obvious pain, and teammates uh, trying to console him as he as he leaves the field. But you see, you see right now he's got that that uh, that black air cast on that left leg to stabilize it. Sit downstairs, Jim Knox. Joe, right down here on the sidelines. Of course, all his teammates gather around him. They really feel for him. It looks like it's going to be serious, guys. They have the air cast on. He still has his helmet on. It definitely looks like it's going to be serious. Not a good situation right now. Ah, Not good. You hate to see it. And uh, no matter what the outcome of the football game is, a huge loss for the Cornhuskers when you lose a player of the caliber of Matt Herring. And this obviously looks like it's going to be for more than a week. You know, could be potentially could be season ending. And, Hopefully nothing more than that. As we said, we're not going to speculate. The junior from Pierce, Nebraska, is in our thoughts right now, though. No doubt. And will continue to be. Now you got to play some football, and this is what's tough. Yeah. The Nebraska They'll Cornhuskers. They'll go for it on fourth down, as you mentioned. Yep. they got to have selective amnesia right now. Forget about that play involving the injury to Matt Herrian and get jacked up again to try to move the chains against the Missouri Tigers. Brandon Jackson, a true freshman, out of Horn Lake, Mississippi. The only one in the backfield. Let's see if they send it to the wide side of the field. Slack Crewald into the backfield. Jackson plugging it straight up the middle. Extra effort. I think he got it. Close, yeah. Yeah. I think he got it from the spot on the linesman on the far side. I don't think there's any doubt he got it. Henry Sweat tried to hold him back. It he, looks like he's got it inside the 32, though. I agree, Joel. The initial hit, he was short, but he kept those legs churning and driving for Coach Bill Callahan, and now they're going to measure. But that second effort may have got him there, that second lurch. Let's see what they put it down. He needed to go inside the 32. Nebraska fans obviously not real happy with the spot on the far side. Sweat, uh, Sweat made a hit, but and the ball came loose, and obviously it's not a fumble. The ground caused the fumble, but where did they spot that football? Did they spot it where his hand, he, he was extending the arm, trying to get every inch out of the run he possibly could. When he hit the ground, the ball rolled out, but it's not a fumble. It's just a case of where it's spotted. Do they have it? Sure. No, Missouri holds, so the Tigers get it back. As Nebraska could not capitalize, remember, and it's been a long delay, unfortunately, because of the injury to Matt Herrian. 
Nebraska had her to the Missouri 42 and comes up with no points. Well that's the Missouri defense that has been keeping the, the team in games all season long. Missouri on, on that side of the football has been very very consistent. The Missouri Tiger defense equivalent to a turnover when you hold a team on downs that's like you know a takeaway. Matt or Brad Smith rather has not been a factor. He's 5 of 14. 60 yards back. Eight. He's on a little dump ball. Kick out screen. Checking right now at the line of scrimmage. Changing the play. You got Tony Temple as a single to the backfield. Temple on the carry. His second career. And he's got another yard. Maybe two. So two carries, three yards for Tony Temple. He's dropped by Ira Cooper, the senior inside backer out of Omaha. First down line, all brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. So the Missouri Tigers doing very little offensively. Fortunate to be tied on the road at three apiece. Should be up, actually. A missed field goal downwind, a 42-yard attempt by Darren Teller and Smith. With the so well, but he can't get away from the second. And now it goes away too late outside of the pocket. He was already out of bounds. Yeah. At the 30. And a loss of about four. Barrett Root again on the situation. He's all over the place. Adam Carricker had him and missed the sack. And Barrett Root says, okay, well, I'll finish it up. And, and he doesn't get the tackle, but he'll get credit for it because he pushes him out of bounds. Watch it, watch Carricker mismatch. Temple trying to block Carricker. Carricker can't get Smith. Root can't. But Smith runs out of real estate. Well, you get a defensive end on a blitz pickup for a true freshman running back. That's a matchup in your favor if your defensive coordinator, Kevin Costco. Trips to the wide side of the field for Brad Smith. So he's facing third and 12. And he's got Beeman in the backfield. Great pocket protection on the wide side into the wind off the fingertips of Umboga. He was going to be short anyway. He's going to catch it and be down on the ground to the 40. So Missouri, another three and out with a punt. Second consecutive time for the Tigers. Throwing into the wind, Joel, and you're throwing from the left hash mark to the right sideline. The ball is in the air a long time, and the wind can play tricks with it. Brad Smith is trying to coax it in there, but Boga can't make the diving catch, and as you described, Joel, if he had made it, would have been short anyway. Renico waiting for the hand is punt. They're getting a lot of air time, unfortunately, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> and they're pressing. Touchdown, Nebraska. David Horn finally got the block, or was it Horn? It was Horn. And Ix picks it up. Ix with the score. Nebraska takes the lead. David Horn, you mentioned it, or was it Shanley? I believe it may have been Shanley on the block. Was it Shanley? It was eight or nine, one of those. But I, yeah, I think it was Shanley. It makes more sense that it would be Shanley. Here he comes right up the middle. It is Shanley. Lays out, takes it right off the punter's foot. What a fortuitous bounce. I mean, you talk about bouncing up right into the bread basket. Well, the, Missouri got one that, uh, that converted to field goal. Nebraska gets one that ends up as touchdown. The Angeles for the point after. So Nebraska, the special teams, the defense we talked about. Somebody's going to have to come through because both offenses are sputtering while Nebraska gets it from special teams. On top of the Tigers at home by seven. Guys. All right, Mike, Nebraska back to the quick turnaround. Downwind, DeAngelis through the uprights. Good. Yes, and it counts. <laughs> So Missouri gets it first and 10 of their own 20 and a breakdown of the blocking assignment for the Tigers on specials. Absolutely. Blocking out, blocking down. Shanley comes free, and he should be picked up easily. A little chip there. Up back blocks down inside. They just let Shanley come right up the gut, basically unmolested, other than just like a little stab with the left in the chest. And Kenny needed to just give him more attention. And here comes Shanley. I mean, you know, one guy stabs him. The up back comes down in, inside over street the personal protector blocks down too far Shanley comes clean Smith on first down and the catch for Victor Cisse but not much past the 21 to the 22 we wondered they have been the favorite target Cisse and Martin Rucker the Richard Freshman's X gets the touchdown return the two tight ends have been huge factors Missouri in their wins and Rucker in fact the younger brother as there is Shanley, who was the one on top of the situation, almost untouched. Kenny gave him a tap, and that was it. That was all. 
Just gave him a stab with that left arm. Second and eight from the 22. Uh, Brad Smith shifting Woods in the backfield. He's trying to change the play. Not easy in this environment. Will they get it off in time? Yes. Nothing available. No gain for Woods. And there is a flag. Was there no snap? Did the clock expire? Looks like they're declining. it. Right the snap. Ball start. start. Seven, offense. Down. Can't decline it. Play never occurred, so it's going to be second down all over again. Llewellyn. Llewellyn uh, basically jumped the snap count. I think they realized they were running out of time, and he probably tried to, uh, to heighten his intensity. And can't do that. Just can't do that. Here's Llewellyn. You don't have to do much. All you have to do is flinch. Flinch. So now Missouri back inside their own 16. Smith can't complain with the protection. Tall one for Coffey, and he's got the first down. Coffey up to the 35 with the catch. The junior from Cleveland brought down by Bullocks and Fabian Washington. It's okay to go tall with Coffey. He's 6'5". 6'5", 210 pound receiver. That's a, that's a 220 actually. That's a big, big target. And he presented himself as an available one. Nice job getting himself between the linebacker and defensive backfield, finding that little soft area of the zone and settling right in there. Seems like that's the first first down for Missouri in a half hour. Now, flushed out, Smith finds some time on the comeback route. It doesn't work. Sievers forced him wider than he wanted to go. And it's going to be second and 10. First down line all brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox in Lincoln, Nebraska. We have a little more than eight minutes to play in the half. Neither team has done a thing offensively. Special teams the difference right now in the game. Nebraska with the block and the score. And Missouri got their field goal off a deflected punt. Both of them set up by special teams plays. Smith. Checking off at the line on a second and ten. The slant and it's poked away from behind. Timing it well as it went out for Rucker. And he was in the slot. Or was it a boga? It was a boga. And they went for a boga. And our trivia question, principal financial group trivia today. Five coaches have come back to college football after they've taken a team to the Super Bowl. And we'll come back with the answer on those five. One of them is very easy. One of them is coaching here today. You got it. <laughs> that's a layup. That's a layup. Bill Callahan, that's a little bunny for the answer book right there. Third and ten for the Tiger. Smith is now 7 of 19 for 80 yards. Not exactly his kind of start. Once again, audibleizing. Uh -oh. And a bad snap for Smith to work with. Blitz came late. And off the fingertips of his wide receiver on that side, William Franklin, a true freshman out of Vashon High School in St. Louis. It would have been enough for the first down. He was right on the marker. And once again, throwing into that win, plays tricks with that football. It turns it into a Jim Wakefield knuckleball a little bit. And right now, Nebraska is making Brad Smith beat them with his throwing arm. And it's not getting done. Missouri's not able to do that. Brad Smith not beating them with his feet like he did last year. Can't get it done with the arm. Hannes with better protection. Benico coming over and looking into the sun over the shoulder. At the 28. Not looking for some open field, but he is cut down by Giannino down there early near the 31-32 yard line. Well, one of the guys, uh, the answer to your question, Joel, about head coaches that uh, went to the Super Bowl and came back to college football. I played for one that that did that for us, Greg, so I know he's one of the guys along with Bill Callahan. And the answer to our principal, financial group trivia. Well, Bill Callahan, you mentioned for us, Greg. Yep, he did it. What about Bill Walsh, Bill George Wallace. Allen, and yeah, Bobby, Bobby Ross back at uh, Army now. But he won a national championship at Georgia Tech, and yes. then he goes to the San Diego Chargers, takes him to the Super Bowl, now he's back at Army. First and 10 for the Huskers. They're up by seven. Solid field position. It'll be Corey Ross. Ben Ross out of the edge. Nobody at home from Missouri on that side. He's out of bounds, though, short of the first down. He just slipped. 
Right foot slid to the chalk. He's short of the first down by about a half a yard as we head back to the studio. Mike Goldberg and another Dr. Pepper game break. Mike, Joel, back to. If we've done it. In yep. fact, we've done the only home loss in Bob Stoop, Stoop's career right. at Oklahoma. By o Oklahoma State, yes. uh, inflicted, inflicted the pain. And that's the second punt that Ferguson has dropped in about a three week time frame. We had a game where he dropped the punt right. as well. And, I mean, drop the snap to and punt got, the football. By the way, I was in Oklahoma City, and the prediction for the weather there today, I had an NBA game there Thursday, 75, 70 degrees oh, for man. Stillwater today. So Let's take a look at what Nebraska is doing here to, to Missouri. Look at all the motion. Look at the movement. Missouri is communicating, changing the strength of their formation defensively. Now they shift. And then Nebraska brings somebody back into motion, and as a result, here's the movement on that motion. Now they're a man short. Now you can get to the edge. Corey Ross gets there. So all that window dressing, three guys moving, resetting a formation, then you put a guy in motion. That changes all the defensive assignments in terms of run support responsibility, and Nebraska got the soft spot. Brandon Jackson, the larger back at 220 pounds on a counter give, weaves his way for a first down. He's got it past the 44, dropped by Overstreet, the sophomore from Dallas. So Nebraska, until Missouri can stop them on the run, I don't know why they're trying to throw it on first down so often. Yeah, I know the temptation now that you have the wind at your back, you know, is, is try to throw the football and execute that uh, that West Coast offense, wind aided, but they're able to control the line of scrimmage and run the football. And, and that is a big, big part of Bill Callahan's offense that we talked about earlier. They're averaging about 182 yards a game running the ball. Almost all their yards today on the ground. Daly's three for 11 with 16 yards as Ross is in the backfield. Wide side of the field give for Corey Ross. Tries to bend it outside. Good pursuit by Missouri, though. They shut him down after a gain of only two. Inside past the 45. Up to the 46. Jackson stringing it out on that side. You saw, Joel, at the conclusion of that play, all 11 Missouri defenders were at that hash mark. All 11 of them. So it makes you think maybe misdirection and try to use that pursuit that Missouri is utilizing their, their strength to a disadvantage, you know. Get them running and then cut back, misdirection stuff. Design cutback plays because, boy, they are flying to the football. Maybe a little bit of a reverse, some sort of a counter play, those type of things. And we've seen a couple of counters where they're yep. trying to get Missouri to make that first bad step in the wrong direction. Now on the end of round, they give it all it to is. Tierra Third Green. Time. Man, the redshirt freshman. Is stopped immediately. Jason Simpson stayed at home, didn't he, on that play? And, and, and that was good defensive responsibility. Nebraska coach has seen the same thing we saw. And what they're trying to get Missouri to all react this way, but they stay home and play their defensive responsibilities well. Nobody, nice job right here. I mean, that's that's you're taking your responsibility, Bill, turning it back inside with your teammates in pursuit. That's a star for Bill right there. That's a good job in terms of keeping that outside leverage of the football. So now it's going to be third and nine for the Huskers. Ball to their own 45. They're going up against the 15th defensive unit in the nation in total defense. Yardage allowed. Looking for the screen. No. Daly wants the bundle, and he's got a man, and he overshoots him on the outside. Flewellen, Isaiah Flewellen, the sophomore. Calvin Washington fell down in coverage. He's getting slapped five by his teammates right now, but the defensive back, Calvin Washington, went down. And he's off screen right now to the lower right of the screen. You'll see Washington. He's now he's just getting back up. He slipped and fell. And the receiver was able to get separation because the field turf. These guys are having problems staying on their feet. The field turf's causing slippage. Should have been there. an easy throw, though. Yeah. With the wind at the back, sometimes, you know, those sail on you. You just... You have to make adjustments with and against the wind. Cook, punting once again to Mboga. Van Thompson calling for the fair catch. He takes it back inside his own 15, and Missouri is going to have it deep in their own territory, again trailing by seven. Well, 42 yard punt with no return. Good job. Well, the last time the Tigers, we've been talking about it, beat the Huskers in Lincoln. Go back to 1978. Phil Bradley, what a great athlete. Major League Baseball player, a sensational quarterback for Mizzou. Going to future Hall of, Famer, Hall of Famer, Kellen Winslow. Man. And how about James Wilder? Boy, what a tough runner. Tackle to tackle, was he tough? Missouri, 1978, winning by a four. That's what they're playing for. Yeah, the Tigers won it last year, first time, after 24 consecutive losses. Who's going to tintinabulate the bell today? Missouri from the 14. Man, stretching at Tony Temple. That was a tough run and a good job of the two freshmen. So he's got to pass the 20 out to the 21-yard line for a gain of about seven. 
Well, who's ringing the bell right now, Jim Knox? All right now, Nebraska's ringing the bell, but it's on Missouri sidelines, guys. 1927, this bell started. It started by the Honor Society. You see what happens is the winner of each game, the bell goes back and forth. Missouri won the game last year against Nebraska, so the bell's on their sideline. Whoever wins today, the next year, the bell will be on their sidelines. Honor Society started this back in 1927. They said the bell was stolen, guys, out of a church. Oh. You gotta ring that bell, Knox. You ring it for I'm us ready, one time. I'm ready, big guy. <laughs> Man, a false start on the right side of the offensive line. Dave, you and I know a lot about the National Honor Society, don't we? Uh, as a matter yeah. of fact, Joel, I'm a member. <laughs> yes, I was a high school member. Yes, I was. Final snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty. Second well, this is the 98th meeting between Nebraska and Missouri. In fact, in the 60s and 70s, and I brought up Dan Devine. Dan Devine, uh, what a great coach for so long at Mizzou. Alan Onofrio followed. And in the 60s and 70s, the two teams split their games in the series down the middle. In fact, Missouri was 6-4 in Lincoln during that stretch. Glory days for the Tigers. Smith now with room to move. Can he make the most of it? Does a good job to get out of the pocket, but shut down right at the 20-yard line. Stuart Bradley finally caught up with him, and a flag at the end of the play. Fabian Washington involved as well, and then extracurricular stuff taking place down the field. Let's we'll see if this is offset or somebody lost their composure. Fabian Washington reacted well to Brad Smith once he got out of pocket. Dead ball. Personal. Yeah. Missouri self-destructing. Self-destructing. Get an offside penalty. Now you have a personal foul. They have had a punt block. Like Gary Pinkle likes to say, got to get Missouri. Missouri can't beat Missouri today. There's the there's the extra one right there. That's uh, that's your money's worth, though. Big offensive line is coming in for the takedown off the top turnbuckle. Tony Palmer, their left guard, a junior from Midwest City, Oklahoma. So Missouri, just two for nine on third down. So what do you call it here? You're short of your 10. You need to take a pass at 24 for a first down. Against the win. Sounds like a good song time. Man. Smith, quarterback draw all the way. Here's one. Look out. Pass at 20. Well, breathe the room for the punter. So he got into the 22 and put a scare into 77,000 plus here in Lincoln. And I think you got to go to more of that. I think you got to put the ball in his hand. He's the best running back. The best running back they've got. Put the ball in his hands. And it's a quarterback counter. Off linemen pulling, making their blocks. It's a pretty good job of staying with it and making a sure tackle. Dan Burrow, nice job. Haynes has got to be tired by now. <laughs> really? <laughs> Waiting back. He won his letter in the first half today. Back deep. It is going to be Santino Panico. It's been a problem for both teams getting the punt off, protecting the punter. And another one, the wind just killed it, but it took a Missouri roll, and Panico wisely grabbed it before it hit the midfield stripe. And Nebraska's going to have it at their own 48 yard, make it the Missouri 48 yard line. Downstairs, Jim Knox. Okay, thanks, Joe. Don't forget, college football fans, email us today, foxsports.com on MSN, keyword ask Knox. We'll answer those emails sometime in the second half. Foxsports.com on MSN, keyword guys. Ask Knox. There we go. This little guy ready for hockey. Yeah, how about oh, that? Yeah. Noxie, what is what's up with that? Is that a hockey goalie or is that for, who is that? That may be Jason. Yeah, it is Jason. He's the only one playing hockey these days. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh no. <laughs> he didn't know about the strike. So now for the Missouri 48, the second time they have started in Tiger territory. Didn't out. do a thing with it the last time. Whoa. Look out. There goes Corey Ross. Inside the 40 to the 39. Overstreet gets to him again, but it's much as we talk about the defensive backs get into the running backs, good news for Nebraska fans. Oh, this guy's a slasher, and he's doing a good job. He's got that low center of gravity. He's one of those classic scenarios of a guy that can hide behind his offensive line. He is 5'6", 195 pounds, so he has got deceptive power. And he doesn't have to try to hide. He doesn't. I mean, he just, he, they can't find him. He's, <laughs> if he stands upright, they still can't find him. But he will make you miss as well. A fine slasher between those tackles. Jackson takes over on second in the yard. So they've got it to the Missouri, 39. Jackson, more than enough for the first down. Another first down is field goal territory. Overstreet again, over on the hit. 
So they move the chains. The field position not working to Missouri's favor as they deferred. They wanted the ball to start the second half, but they didn't capitalize on the wind in the first quarter. They wasted their opportunities in the first quarter. They did. They missed a field goal with the wind at their back and a very un Missouri like. They've had a field, uh, a, a punt block for a touchdown, and they've been out rushed. I mean, Nebraska has been very, very consistent running the football this afternoon. Missouri has been inconsistent in that regard, to say the least. You know, Nebraska already has 102 yards on the ground as Crewald slides into the backfield. Daly looking for a screen that's not there. It's taken away by the Tigers. Now just throw it away. They wanted screen right. Tigers stayed at home again. I think Lyman might have leaked downfield, though. They may have an eligible receiver downfield. That took so long. The timing got so distorted, they scored it downfield on Good pressure as well from Brian Smith, the end out of Denton, Texas. And that, it is. That's the call. Ineligible person downfield. How would you like his job, though? Nebraska, 104 and 7 over the last 16 years at home. They've had 42 straight non-losing seasons. Let's get back to it. Downfield on the offense, number 75. Five yards, five yards, yards, still second down. And in trying to implement this offense, it may take a couple of years to get the components you need, especially at the quarterback position. You know, the thing that amazes me, they're doing some things right, Joel, because they are minus 11 in the turnover department, and they're four and three. Right. When you're minus 11, there's the man that's going to leak downfield. That's Big Cook. And you can see him working downfield, trying to get his block. He thinks the ball's already in the air. He's trying to execute his block on the screen pass. And as a result of the good play by Missouri, the ball hasn't even left the quarterback's hand yet. He's flagged. So they move it back to the Missouri 40. Daly running out of racing room. Back over the middle. Maintain his composure. Kaiser smacked. Daly found him. But Kaiser certainly paid for the hit as Simpson again was there. Boy, Simpson is making Tackle some smacks. I mean, he's Simpson. he's a safety slash linebacker, more linebacker today. And here he comes up, and that is just a textbook smack right there on Kaiser. Remember, Matt Herrian is done for this game, maybe longer the way he was carted off the field. Kaiser and company, they're going to have to step up in the absence of the potential all-conference tight end. It's going to be second down, a little more than five, call it six. They've got to take it inside the 25. Daly again Whoa. to meet off the edge. Doesn't see it coming. The blind side shot. Simpson. Jason Simpson again. What a start. Untouched. You better get a quarterback sack Tackle there. Because it is an untouched situation. Coming into today's game, 18 different people had contributed to 59 tackle for loss. Here comes Mr. Simpson. Nobody's going to block him. Tight end releases. Nobody picks it up. That was a good job by Missouri of breaking down the protection, the West Coast offense pass protection, knowing that he would be unblocked in making the sack. They had an H back on the opposite side. You could see he couldn't get there in time. Absolutely. They were, they were man short. Good call. Now, Daly out of the gun on third and long. Late blitz, a delayed blitz, and the blitz man was picked up as the loose ball comes away from Daly. It looks like the Huskers cover it. James okay. Kinney forced it. He got the sack and the fumble, yep. Yeah. But the Oscars do come away with the football. So the Missouri defense doing everything they can to keep the Tigers in the game. Back to back quarterback sacks. There it comes, Kenny. Working, 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 staying with it. Daly had time to get rid of the football, but nowhere to get rid of it. And uh, Kenny almost gave his team a huge lift by forcing the fumble. Heads up play by Everway, the right tackle. The former defensive lineman. So he's uh, he's used to reacting to balls on the ground, and that former defensive lineman recovered that fumble for Nebraska was big. Are you a little surprised that Missouri's not stopping the clock here? I think right now against the wind, Gary Pinkle says, "I want to go in and regroup." And uh, if I got a quarterback as dangerous as Brad Smith, though, one play, yeah, could make a difference. Ask Les Miles last week. 54 seconds left. Three timeouts on the board. So Missouri lets it run out to 45 seconds and Missouri this has happened to Missouri two straight weeks where an opponent has scored in the final minute of play turnabout would definitely be fair play for the Tigers they gave up don't forget the final minute a touchdown to Texas after they had tied it at 14 and you have to give Oklahoma State a ton of credit for them to go 54 yards eight plays eight plays on an 80 yard drive uh, go 80 yards in 54 seconds is phenomenal drive and Missouri still with all three of their timeouts on the board and Boga calling for the fair catch Almost sailed on him, and he's got it. 
near the 18-yard line. Noxie, what's coming up at the break? Well, as you see, uh, Herbie the Husker, pretty good rhythm right now, but our halftime show with Mike, Kellen, Billy Ray, I think a lot better than Herbie the Husker. They will go over the Bedlam Series, Oklahoma against Oklahoma State, also top 25 college football action. Should be a good halftime show, guys. All right, Herbie, thanks. Come on, Ringo. Come on, Ringo Noxie. Is Oklahoma State one of the better overachieving 6-1 and teams we've seen this year? Well, they find ways to win games. It. They find ways to do it differently. You don't figure them to be six and one. Smith on the keeper. Uh -oh. And this is what I'm talking about. Why wouldn't you stop the clock? Past the 40, up to the 42. Missouri let the clock go. They could have easily had close to a minute on the clock instead of 30 seconds with all three timeouts remaining. That's a good point. You called it when it was uh, when it was occurring. And right there, the quarterback run package pays big dividends. And Brad Smith. Now they're going to find themselves with an with an opportunity potentially, but boy, a lot less time to work with. Right, 30 seconds lost on the clock as Nebraska let it wind down. They were the fortunate ones that Mizzou didn't call the timeout. So Mizzou still has two timeouts left. And with a quarterback like Smith, anything can happen. But Missouri has not found the end zone in the first half. It's been a real stuttering start for the Tigers. Overall, Missouri has had 34 snaps and only 138 yards. Their defense on the other side has been phenomenal. And uh, of that 134 yards, there was the screen pass of 48. 48. That was uh, that was a big chunk of it right there on one play. And, and, and Brad Smith has got a couple of nice runs here on the quarterback counter that have probably totaled another 30 yards. So, I mean, over half of the offensive yards have occurred on three snaps. And Smith is third in the Big 12 in total offense, but it's at 243 yards a game, and he spoiled Tiger fans. He was way above that in recency in his first two years. More of a big play threat, as we just saw his, his maneuverability, the way he can weave like he did on the last play for better than 20 yards. He has that little subtle hip movement that makes people miss. He's got a gift. From the 42 with Beeman in the backfield. Throwing into the wing. Pocket collapsing on Smith. And now, can he find anybody? Why did they intend to target him both? He was falling out of bounds. It's incomplete. But it took 10 seconds off the clock. And they, uh, Missouri wanted a late hit on Brad Smith. Carricker was chasing him. Wanted a late hit out of bounds. Didn't get it. Didn't get the flag. Boy, their, their passing attack looks very very stagnant I mean they just can't get it clicking and you know it's it here you're running running chasing chasing and you go all that way you got to get the lick in Bernard Thomas got the lick in and it was close it was dicey I if mean, he lands on him I agree that there should be a flag but he did and, he, and it wasn't he wasn't in the white five-yard area he was still in bounds on the field of play when the hit was initiated now Smith calling his own number once again looking for a crease and how about a cutback block no, it's not wow. going to work. It's, he runs out of room, and he saw that he was not going to make it to the corner. Character stayed over there. Also, Bernard Thomas, the senior from Palo Alto. That's one of the longest runs I've seen in terms of yards to pick up three. He was serpentine, and back and forth he went. And the Tigers let the clock run out. So the difference, a special teams play by Nebraska. Block punt that Ix took in for the score. Nebraska going to the break, up by seven. Trying to bounce back after losing at Missouri when Missouri scored the final 27 points of the game last year in Columbia. What a defensive first half for Nebraska. The only points they allowed was was due to the, the deflected punt. Downstairs, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. Coach, you got to be extremely pleased with the black shirts containing Brad Smith and holding that offense to just 142 yards. But they did an outstanding job. Our defense really came to play in the first half, and our special teams made a crucial block right before the, you know, obviously in the second quarter to put us ahead. I'm really proud about the way our kids are playing. We just got to make something happen on offense. Real quick, Coach, the loss to Matt Herring, that has to really hurt. Oh, uh, it cuts deep. You know, he's a pivotal guy on our offense, and to lose a marquee player in the midst of a championship run, it's, it's going to hurt us. Thank you, Coach. Now, there's no doubt the, the biggest surprise so far in this first half has been the play of the black shirts oh, yeah. after what they've done for They're the back. last three, four weeks. They have been victimized. 10 3 Nebraska. Now let's head to the studio to join Mike Goldberg, Kelly Winslow, Billy Ray Smith, and our college football Saturday studio. Gentlemen. Continues in Lincoln, Nebraska with the Cornhuskers on top of the Missouri Tigers. The Tigers try to win in Lincoln for the first time since 1978. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lappin. We're almost void of offense from either side right now. The two quarterbacks combined 106 yards passing. 11 for 34. Fortunately for all of us, 
We did get excited a little bit, and it came from the special teams. The kicking game was huge, and both teams got their hands on punts, respective punts. This is the uh, first field goal attempt of the game. When did the back Tannarelli can't convert? He pushes it wide right. But then you have stepping up large. Brandon Massey deflects a punt, and then Shanley deflects a punt, and it bounces right into the arms of Ickes. He takes it for the touchdown. That's the difference in this game right now. Special teams have been monumental, setting up 10 points. Daly struggling throwing the football. Ross has been a big, big story running it, and Barrett Rude, the leading tackler, doing his thing. And then for Missouri, 33% for Brad Smith throwing it. Woods had the big catch on the screen pass. Brad Smith, a leading rusher. Eight rushes, 56 yards in the first half. That's what they're going to have to do more of, Joel. Get him running the football in the second half. Brad Smith. Well, let's see if they go to their main weapon because he has not been utilized much on the ground as Woodley is back deep. Once again, but down Wood DeAngelis takes the return team right out of Missouri's plans. And our Zales first half numbers. Scintillating, aren't they? <laughs> 11 first downs combined between the two teams. The quarterbacks just didn't have anything going in the passing game, even when they were downwind. Yep. And, and the, the, some punt blocks, obviously, you see that in, in Nebraska controlling the, the time of possession. The tailback position, Jackson and Ross, Joel, 19 carries, 109 yards, very effective for Nebraska. And as we said, Brad Smith, the only factor in the running game for Missouri. It'll be Marcus Woods on first down. And last two latched onto by Adam Carricker from behind on the backside for a gain of maybe two at the most. Downstairs, Jim Knox. Okay, thanks, Joel. Just got through talking to Gary Pinkle. He said, you take away that block punt, and they're tied at three. He's pleased the way the defense is going. Of course, not pleased the way the offense is going. They did make adjustments at halftime. We'll see if that works on offense, guys. All right, Knox, he's second and eight coming up for the Tigers. As Wood stays behind Smith. Trips on the wide side of the field for Mizzou. So everybody's been able to score on Nebraska except Missouri. Bandits underthrown into the wind as Brad Smith had the flutter ball coming up short as he was going on that side from Boga. Well, let's see if Missouri is on track. 62 rushing yards. That's not on track for, for 175. Yakety yak, 88 total yards after contact. That's not bad. You just don't have that many big plays. Third and uh, third down, two for ten. That's not going to cut it. I mean, can't go 20% on third down. They have to be more efficient on first and second down, and they have to play a whole 60 minutes here. Here comes the blitz off the edge, recognized by Smith. Wide open. He's got the first down. He goes to Coffee, the junior from Cleveland. Gives Missouri a first down. Chad Sievers forcing him out. So Missouri has not come from behind yet this year, don't forget. They're 0-2 when they've been behind to the half. Now, how will they respond, David? A little crossing pattern, and Nebraska loses track of Coffee. Coffee gives Missouri a break right there by moving the chains. First and 10 for the Tigers. They just need to avoid third down. That was a second and eight. Out of the gun. Design play for Smith to run the football. And can't get back to the line. Loses a couple. Missouri Bullock's forcing him out. The free safety on that side. So they, between the tackles, Nebraska had it covered completely on the short side of the field. And what you had going in there, Bullock's was the spy. They are going to spy Brad Smith with the safeties from time to time. And that time, Bullock's had him. Bullock's was mirroring his, mirroring his every move. And that's what you have to do with Brad Smith. It takes a person out of coverage, but the way they're struggling throwing the football, particularly in the wind, spying him is a good call right now. You got to get him on the ground there. The spy has to be able to tackle. It'll be second and 12 for Smith. Looking back after moving the pocket and coming across, he's got the receiver. It's complete to Cisse, his first catch, and he goes out of bounds inside the 35. Ooh, man. Just barely stepped out. They'll put him out at the 29. He broke the tackle of Stuart Bradley, but he could not quite stay in bounds after he broke that tackle. Little move the pocket to the right, throw back. Tight end running a little shallow cross away from Brad Smith, wide open. And there's the stiff arm, runs away from Stuart Bradley, but just cannot keep the momentum as he steps out of bounds with that left foot. Tight ends have already surpassed their total from last season. 
And he catches Cissé and Rucker. They have been the key components as Wood sets up. Plenty of time. Smith underneath. Now all of a sudden a bullet to Mboga into the win. And he's got another first down to the 16-yard line. I'll tell you, Missouri has made some nice adjustments at halftime based on what they're doing here. Here, spreading the field now. Mboga is going to run his route. Take him down the football field. Run a little dig. On the money. Nice throw by Brad Smith. Brad Smith has thrown the ball better on this drive than he did in the entire first half. And this is into the win. The adjustment, look at Missouri spreading him out with three wide, spreading the box out. Two on the wide side of the field, with Wood staying in the backfield. And the change at the line by Brad Smith. And first down from the 16. Smith ad living. Man did get back to the line. No, no sack. He's got it to 15. Smith, the ball carrier. So Bullock's got to him the strong safety. It'll bring up second and long. And remember, uh, offensive coordinator Dave Christensen told us he was going to script his first 10 plays of the second half to get off to a better start. And so far, what he has scripted on those 10 plays has got Missouri off to a much better start. And they've done a good job all season long in the red zone. Second and nine as they continue to go with three. Only a single to the wide side of the field, though. Ekwer Ekwer. Smith on the counter. And they read it perfectly. Barrett Root stayed at home, the middle linebacker. That was so effective the first two seasons for Missouri with Brad Smith. Barrett Root, his dad, Tom, former teammate of mine with the Bengals, has got to be extremely proud. Look at him directing traffic. He makes the read. Now he scrapes over the top, unblocked. He splits a couple of offensive linemen at the line of scrimmage and makes the tackle. That's a great play by Barrett Root. And he is the all-time leading tackler at Nebraska. And he set a record last year, 149 tackles in a single season was a record as well. He's got single season and career tackling record. Drives turn up the Tigers with their own 20. Now a third and 10 from the Huskers, 16. Plenty of time for Smith. Needed a chip and throws it away, and it could be a grounding call. Could be. It will is. be. He never got out of the pocket. No receiver in the neighborhood. Wally Muhammad, the junior from Bloomfield, New Jersey, in his face. Huge play. You do not take a sack or an intentional grounding play in the red zone. Have to throw it away sooner than that in the pocket because now, remember, you're kicking against the wind. That was a third down play. You lose the yards and the, and the down. Intentional grounding on the 16 offense. We have lots of down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. Well, it, it's just like taking a sack, and, and you can't do it in the red zone. You know, and Nebraska does a good job. I mean, it's a little play-action pass. Look at the linebackers. Again, the field's compressed. No windows, no holes to throw the football. And finally, Brad Smith throws it away. Nebraska's zone coverage was incredibly tight. Nowhere to go with the ball. Crossett's going to try it. The redshirt freshman who handles the kickoff duties, not Tantoretic. Look at look at Nebraska, seven stops in the red zone defensively. Let's see if Missouri can convert here for the field goal. 45-yard attempt from Crossett. And he pushed it right off the set. It wasn't good. So instead of a 33-yard try, which was what it would have been had they just incompleted a pass, they would have had it to the 23 on the placement. It would have been a 33-yard attempt. It would have kept Tantarelli in the equation. Right. That penalty you were talking about makes it a 45-yard try. And as you said, Joel, you know, the, the wind, the snap was good. The hold was good. I think he was factoring the wind in a little bit because Tantarelli, when he kicked his into the wind, it really started hooking on him left. Cross it, leaves it out right, and it doesn't come back. And he left it well out right. That was his first field goal try of the season. Corey Ross in the backfield. One of the few times we've seen a straight eye formation today behind Crewald. Man, it didn't do anything. In fact, a loss back to the 25 of a couple of yards. And looking back on what we were talking about, what Nebraska had to do to be successful today. Ball security and blocking the punt. That dog will hunt right there. Just three missed tackles. That's a big plus when they had 33 last week. Ordinary Smiths, they've done a great job there. That's why Nebraska has that big seven-point lead in this titanic defensive struggle right now. It'll be second and a dozen at the 25. Seal on the outside. 
Man, almost breaking it. Corey Ross, sensational play by Henry Sweat. There is a flag on that side of the field. I wonder if the crackback block was legal. They had a crackback to seal the outside, like you said, Joel. You have to hit him above the waist, not in the back. I guess they picked it up. Well, no penalty. They did pick up the flag. Man, don't forget, Wendy's High School Heisman program recognizes today's scholar athletes and citizens. And packets have been mailed to over 26,000 public and private schools. Online nominations are also being accepted. So go to www.wendyshighschoolheisman.com. Nominate your Heisman hopeful of tomorrow. Another flag on the play and a low toss by Joe Daly as he was going on the, on the wide play. side to Flew Ellen. Or well, actually to the short side to Flew Ellen. I don't think Nebraska had a legal formation. I think they only had six on the line of scrimmage. Pretty that's, clean start to the second half. And that's the uh, that's the call. You have to have seven men up on the line of scrimmage. I don't think they did. Illegal formation. On the offense. Only six men on the line. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. On the positive side, don't forget, Joe Daly only had three completions last week. Dave, he's got four already. Right. You have to have seven up on the line of scrimmage. And there are five interior linemen right here. I see. I count seven. Six, seven. Looks like seven to me. <laughs> I don't know about that. I guess maybe there's ten. The tackle's too far off the line of scrimmage on his set. So with that missed try and a high snap, Cook did a good job. But. With the wind at his back, it's off the side of his foot in the Missouri roll. Back into Nebraska territory, it'll be touched near the 47-48 yard line. So a break for the Tigers, but will they take advantage of it? Working into the wind. The Zoo still down by seven. Well, the offenses, we're still waiting for those two units to arrive today. True. Nebraska leads at 10-3. How would you like to be on top by seven in the third? Like Nebraska, and you're one of ten on third down conversions. Living right. Yeah, exactly. Now on first down from the 48, still nothing there. This time Tony Temple. Brendan Teamer was over there, the sophomore from Omaha for the Huskers. Now this is Nebraska defense we've been talking about. They gave up 70 to Texas Tech. They gave up 45 last week to Kansas State, and this isn't exactly a special year for K-State. They'll no, be the first to admit that. And, and you're right, and K-State rushes for 294 last week, but every other game other than last week, Nebraska has done a great job shutting down the run, and they have so far today, they've been very aggressive. Smith on second and 10, and his wide receiver, Ekru, Ekru, and that's a big play by today's standards. He gets about five down to the 42 brought down by Barrett Rue nice kick out block by Tony Palmer the left guard get out there and, and peel the defender off so at least pick up uh, half the necessary yards Gary Pinkle is is totally befuddled by by his offensive inconsistency you know he said he's been here before some somebody just has to step up and start making plays and the one that everybody looks to where's number 16 Brad Smith they need more than five, almost six. On third down in the low snap. Smith on the out. Oh, did Ekru, Ekru hang on to the football? No. They say he was out of bounds even if he did. Fabian Washington or Coffee over there, actually. And Fabian Washington on the coverage. Well, again, nowhere to go initially. Brad Smith has to break the pocket. And now he's throwing on the run, and the coverage is outstanding down the field. Fabian Washington is in his shirt. Nice coverage by Washington on Ooh. coffee. Boy, that's close. I now think he got a foot down. Yeah, the left foot looked, and he had possession. Left foot looked like yes. it was down. Nebraska's uh, sideline making the call early for the officials. <laughs> Haynes, the former walk-on punter, the sophomore from Branson, Missouri, getting a lot of mentions today as Santino Panico waits. And Phil Negro would be proud of that one. Tim, yeah, Tim Wakefield. <laughs> It's down to the 15, a break for Missouri. So Nebraska gets it for the second time in the second half. Failed to pick up a first down the first time. A 28-yard punt into the win with no return. Well, in one of the more bizarre plays in this rivalry, you go back to 1997, Matt Davison. What about a ricochet? And they let it stand. Big 10, they'd go to the review. It's forced the game into overtime. And then Scott Frost, after that insult, at the end of regulation, and the fans had to get off the field. They yeah. were ready to celebrate Missouri's they, victory. They were going to tear the goalposts down. They had to leave the field. Save the athletic department some money. 
And then the touchdown by Frost as they won in overtime on the first down carry. Absolutely nothing there for Brandon Jackson. And Jim Knox with a special guest downstairs. Here he is. You ask and we deliver, Joel. Matt Davison, who actually is a sideline radio reporter for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. How's life after the miraculous catch, Matt? Well, it's been pretty good, I guess. You know, it's been seven years, I guess, now this week. So uh, it's, it's the time's gone fast. But, um, yeah, I'm working with the team now. It's been a lot of fun. Real quick, people probably still come up to you and talk about that 97, don't they? Yeah, you know, I don't usually go a day or two without somebody from Nebraska reminding me of it, so they won't let me forget it. It was a good moment. I appreciate it. We'll let you get back to work, Matt. Thanks a lot. Seven Jackson years. again, Atiyah Ellison with the solo stop, the senior from St. Louis. Seven years. We're all getting old. Joel Noxie, what's up, seven years? You may be. Matt Davison, seven-year itch right there. Huh? After that play? You may be getting you know, old. Did, does he look like Merrill Hodges or just me? I thought it was Merrill Hodge talking to Nazi down there. I think he, he looked like he could be his brother. Amazing. You know, it's just a little trivia for you. There he is. Look, I, now there's I Merrill exam Hodge. after the game. A little bit. A little Matt bit. and Merrill. We'll give you that. Now on third down, we're fishing. <laughs> third and a little more than ten. Daly with pocket protection. Now he can run for it. He should be able to get to the marker. Will he make it? No. Boy, he dashed out of bounds well. Sure. Daly, ball carrier. Missouri rallied up pretty well. They had a good angle. They had a good angle. I think Joe just took a little too long to make the decision. If he had Ran made this sooner, I think right now, you know, instead of right, right away, if he had just tucked it and run instead of keeping it up there like he was going to throw the football, it slowed him down. Missouri was able to rally up and make a a defensive stand where the kicking games have been inconsistent. Sometimes you love them, sometimes you hate them. There have been a few shank punts, but block punts have, have helped both teams. Well, Cook just brought down a high snap. This one much better. Wow. And I guess he turned it over. Man. Now he's yet to be determined. Did he outkick his coverage, as they say? Umboga breaking tackles early. Dan down across the 25. Huge punt. Man. How about a 64-yarder? Not a bad return, though, in Missouri. Decent field position outside of their own 25-yard line. Nebraska, beautiful day for football. Temperature in the mid-50s and under construction right now. The Tom and Nancy Osborne Athletic Complex. And what a facility is going to be. And, in fact, Darren Erstad just donating a million dollars over the last few days. Former uh, punter from Nebraska. Of course, uh, World Series champion with the California Angels two years ago, three years ago. Can Marcus Woods get out of the backfield? Took too long. Wally Muhammad on top of him. It took a long time. Nebraska is playing their gap control responsibilities beautifully. Everybody is exactly where they should be. They are in sync. Nobody is missing their has, gaps. Has this guy been under the gun just a bit? Kevin Cosgrove is happy with what he's seeing today. He's got his guys ready to play, and the execution is meeting the energy level. Well, the, guy, the guys he left back at Wisconsin, one of the top defensive units in the nation this year. Toss sweep, Woods, wide side of the field. No, no at all for Missouri out of the locker room, especially on the ground. It stays at the 26. It'll be third and 12. Back downstairs, Jim Knox. Joe, a little bit more about the Tom and Nancy Osborne Athletic Center. It is expected to open in August of 2006. And you talking about a complex. They will move a brand new weight room over there. They'll expand it, believe it or not, their weight room here, second to none in the nation. They will have a bigger one over there. They'll have a soccer complex. Of course, indoor practice field, meeting rooms, you name it. It will be a gigantic complex opening August 2006. It's amazing. The weight room's already 30,000 square feet. Flank the screen doesn't work. Sean Coffey on the receiving end of a couple of hits. Rude. Over there was Teamer and Rude. Kellen Houston early. And here it is, wide receiver screen. Just a little hitch route. But Nebraska, the inside out pursuit, the run support, the, the support basically by the corner out there. Outstanding. I mean, right now the black shirts are playing beautiful team defense in every phase. Bain is punting into the wind as Santino Panico has an opportunity with Nebraska in great shape. Only touchdown to the game came off a block punt. Panico now with room from the 33. Man, pretty decisive. He's dropped at the 37. Yeah. So nothing there as your Daniel Mitchell pops a call. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Nebraska gets it back. Firm grasp of the system. 
Uh, we haven't audibleized as much with him, but we will begin to continue that process and try to build on that process as we move forward. But it was important for us that he get the uh, get the nature, get the, the basis of this offense uh, so that he can execute without any hesitation. I think that's exactly right, Joel. He's got a firm grasp of the basics. I mean, you know, when he started, it was like he was in France trying to speak Spanish. Now at least he's got the right language. Well, a couple of days ago when we met and talked uh, with Bill Callahan, he said that it, it's tough for guys on Sundays. Sure. Let alone guys that have never seen this kind of system to play it on Saturdays. Weaving his way out of the backfield, nothing there. Again, Tierra Green. But it's tough for Joe Daly. And then there's going to be pressure to keep the position because there's going to be recruits brought in, specifically guys that have grown up in passing systems and probably from the West Coast. And there's Joe Daly. And, and really, it's the communication of the play is so critical. Coach Callahan says, look, I don't want to have any mistakes. You come to me, I will tell you, because the play call tells the protection, the formation, everybody's route, the snap count. The play itself is like reciting in Encyclopedia Britannica. Ross is out of the backfield. Then they lift up on the near side. Yeah. Yeah, a couple Ross. of people moving there. Fire the snap. Ball start. Number 28 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Yeah, that's the wide receiver, Isaiah Flewellen. And here's what we were talking about with, with Joe Daly. I mean, he has had his moments of, of brilliance. And, of course, Baylor's the first time a quarterback in Nebraska history had thrown for over 300 yards. He went for 342. But then last week, he was 3 for 12 with an interception against Kansas State. So it's been a roller coaster ride, you know, up and down the inconsistencies that you would expect with such a dramatic change. I mean, it's like north to south pole going option to west coast. There, there can't be a more dramatic change. He's looking now at a second and long, and it's dropped on the quick out. So he tried to get it to his wide receiver, Flewellen, who picked up the five-yard penalty. Well, we talked to Joe Daly, talked about the difficulties in picking up this system. It's a little different because uh, I understand, you know, you know, everything he's saying now before, you know, I used to, you know, call these plays and I'd ask him, you know, what was that? And, uh, and didn't really understand. But now, you know, I have a, you know, a complete understanding, you know, uh, you know, the idea behind each play and, you know, and the concept involved. Executions another thing completely. Yeah, he knows the language anyway. Yeah, he wants to throw it deep and he's oh. got a receiver and he overshoots and he was behind Flewellen as well. As Flewellen was working against A.J. Kincaid and did have the angle and a step. Mm. It, you, know, you can't question Daly's arm strength. Of course, he's got the wind at his back here. But he does throw a very tight spiral and he throws a good ball. And once you get it up in that jet stream, as we've seen on some punts, a 64-yard punt, and once it gets up there, it can just take off. Joe Daly thought he had one there. Nebraska, six one-play drives, six one-play touchdown drives, leading the NCAA. They do have the big playability. Sam Cook, another high snap, did a good job. He's got to be feeling like he's working in the chain gang right now. It's inside the 20, and it will die at around the 18-yard line. Whatever he's got any kind of voice. College football Saturday will continue as tonight Stanford taking on UCLA and then Texas Tech, Kansas State. What a big game that's going to be in the Big 12. Full day of college football will all continue right after a matchup here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, watch out for Kansas State. If they beat Texas Tech tonight, they go to Columbia and knock off Missouri. All of a sudden, here comes Bill Snyder again. You can't eliminate and discount Kansas State with all the experience they've had in big games over the last decade plus. So Missouri's got it again inside their own 20 yard line. Smith. Any room to roam? And a little touch pass and a good one at that. A nice ad lib. So he found him Boga on the move. Man, he's got enough for the first down. And that's what Smith has done so well in previous seasons. It will, and two things there, awareness and patience. He was flirting with the line of scrimmage, but he knew what yard line he could advance to. And then he gave it all the time in the world before he gave that little little pass. You see the receiver right there on the shallow cross. Brad Smith allows him to unfold. Good patience and good field awareness on that snap. So from the 18, a gain of 15 oh. to the 33. Early pressure gets to Smith. The sack. 
Belongs to Lakeven Smith, the junior from Macon, Georgia. And you're going to have a lot of respect for Lakeven Smith. Two reconstructed ACLs. Here's a guy that loves the game of football, and, and he just blew by the lineman and the back trying to pick him up. The back tries to come back and chop him. He defeated two on that snap. Lakeven Smith loves the game. To come back from one reconstructed ACL is remarkable. To do it twice, that is big time determination. Well, the exceptional play right side of the offensive line there. That's a tackle. We're not talking about an end. That's for a, a tackle to go on top. That's a that's a breakdown right there in protection. That's an assignment error. Smith moving the pocket in trouble. And throws it over the head by a good margin. Uh, he's wide out on that side. Coffee. Smart play with Bernard Thomas in his face. You know, the, the thing that Kevin Cosgrove has going for him now, Joel, he can get pressure only rushing four. Four against five is winning for the Cornhuskers, and he can put seven in coverage. And there's no windows for Brad Smith to throw the football. He's playing zone defense, and, and he's rushing four, and he's bottling this Missouri Tiger offense up, particularly when they're going into the wind. He's got them figured out. So now third and long, almost 17. Here it comes again. Smith is not going to get out of the backfield. They've got another sack. Barrett Rude. We used to call his dad Rudy Ray, Tom Rude. <laughs> when he was a Bengal, he was Rudy Ray. And uh, Barrett Rude, you know, uh, Kevin Costco obviously loves this guy's determination. And there's Rude right there, eyeing it. He's already got it figured out. He's reading his keys. He knows what's happening. Defeats a block, takes a perfect angle, finishes. That's defense right there. That is the third straight series. Missouri has not picked up oh. the first down. Now Hannah's going to get it away. They'll try, and he mixes it. Covering the football, guess who? Shanley, the man who got the block earlier in Nebraska, brewing again in Missouri territory of the 15. Boy, the punt team has been heinous today for Missouri. Heinous can't control the snap on that punt, and another one was blocked by Shanley. Heinous bobbles the snap from center. Shanley falls on that. Another short field for the Cornhuskers, and, and this is very, very uncharacteristic of Gary Pinkle's teams. The kicking game and turnovers are what his football team's all about. The snap's fine. Haynes goes right off his hands and hits him right in the smush. Hits him right in the face mask. Now he's in trouble. And now it's ugly. You know, you know who, who also made a great play on that was, was Ickes, who, who scored the touchdown. Watch him push, push Haynes away from the ball right there. As he's trying to punt, uh, punt it, Ickes pushes him away. Corey Ross behind Crewall, the fullback. Look out. Touchdown, Nebraska. That, that's called going for the jugular, and that's the seventh time this season Nebraska has had a one-play scoring drive. And this one after, not a turnover, but another special teams error, a kicking game error. And, and Nebraska said, I'm going right for the throw, and I'm going to step on it, and I'm not going to, you know, readjust my foot. I'm going to take the air on. DeAngelo's for the point after 17-3, or make it now. Yes, 17-3, not 19-3, but 17-3 Nebraska. Great block by the fullback, easy time for Ferrazzo. Nebraska capitalizing. As P Coach Bingham has said to us, Missouri beats Missouri better than anybody else, and they do a number on themselves again. Nebraska takes advantage of it. Line left tackle Erickson in particular got to the linebacker level, got the seal block. Ross gone. Big play. Woodley brought the kickoff back 22 yards from the goal line to the 22. Smith with Missouri on the ropes late in the third. Touch pass and it's complete. As he's got a first down across the 38 up to the 39 yard line, it goes. He's wide out on that side of Boga. A minute and 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Missouri will get the win at their back. But now they're two scores down and have struggled mightily offensively. They've only got three points on the board. And, and their biggest problem has been the kicking game. They've had a punt block, and then the punter couldn't handle a perfect snap. And it gave Nebraska two touchdowns. Missouri also has had no ground game at all None. in the in, in the contest. 25 rushes, 31 yards. Smith with time. 
and the out is way too tall for a guy that's 6'5", Sean Coffey. And he was available as that ball got away from Brad Smith. So the first down line all brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It is all about the O at Overstock.com. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knox in Lincoln, Nebraska. And will we get a game out of it? Nebraska capitalizing on Missouri mistakes. You go back to the last four plus quarters now for Nebraska prior to that one. Their last two touchdowns came off botched punts, a block punt, and the week before a bad snap against Kansas State. And again, very uncharacteristic of the Gary Pinkle coach team. Again, Marcus Woods on the carry, maybe two at the most. Up past the 40 to the 41. Gary Pinkle's formula for success. Win the turnover ratio, which they've done all year long. They are plus 10, seventh best in the country. Solid special teams has not been the case today. And then so sound defense has been the case today. And a running game that you can balance with a quarterback that can win games for you. I mean, all those components are in place. That's why he's very, very frustrated. His team, he feels, should be performing better than they are at this stage of the season. So now it's going to be third and long. Smith setting. Gets the first down, yes. Grab his mate. He's got to do Mboga again, and he's got enough. He went beyond the sticks. It was right there on target to the 48-yard line. Well, they've got to get points off this possession because you look at the third quarter with the wind at their back, they'll get two, maybe three more possessions. Well, what they have to do in the fourth quarter is remove Missouri from the schedule today. Nebraska has shown they're capable of beating Missouri without Missouri helping. And, and they have to take themselves off their schedule in the fourth quarter and see if they can mount a comeback because Nebraska is playing opportunistic football right now. So Nebraska led by seven at the half. They're now up by 14. That elusive win in Lincoln. Would it stay that way for Missouri as they've not won here since 1978? After three, it's the Huskers by 14. The University of Nebraska, how about the four horsemen? Notre Dame facing Nebraska back in 1941. And the goalposts, how about Wood? As Nebraska lost that game to the four horsemen, 21 to 13. Dave, hmm. you were there. Yeah, you know what? I still have my helmet. I got my leather <laughs> helmet, no face mask. It's unbelievable. I'll treasure it forever. First down, Missouri. Called play for Smith. Out on the edge, look out. And he's knocked out of bounds. Good yardage, though. Then they made him pay with the hit. Yeah, Stuart Bradley and got him from behind. Our Dr. Pepper game summary through three. Now look at this. Touchdowns off of Missouri's punt team. One block for touchdown. Punter can't handle it. Perfect snap. Gives Nebraska one, one play touchdown score. Ross creeping up on another 100-yard game. He's had six in the last 11. And Brad Smith trying to get it done single-handedly. He needs some help. Others around him have to support his effort. He cannot do it all by his lonesome. So Missouri's got another first down, this time at the 34. Smith going for the bundle on a jump ball, and with contact, the wide receiver, Ekwu Ekwu, could not get to it, as Laurenell McPherson made sure he wasn't going to climb the ladder for that one. How would you like to be on top by 14 after three quarters and have only 136 yards offensively on 51 snaps? Yeah, that's some short fields there in a one-play uh, drive situation. The punt team, that's good coverage, too. I mean, that's using the sideline as the 12th defender. When you can score uh, an unconventional touchdown off of the punt block team and then get another short field off of a punt mystery, that's huge. Opening seconds of the oh. four. Man, what a one-handed stab. Coffee. where's the stick -em? Jeez. Sean Coffey. <laughs> <Coffee. laughs> where's the Velcro? I'm telling you. He must have some tackiness on those gloves. And those gloves are a little tacky. I but like this that is paw. still an incredible. He gets the right mucker up. Whoop! Catches the tip of the ball and controls it. That dog will hunt right there in anybody's lead. He is a junior. So when you look at the potential to play down the road on Sundays, another year at Mizzou, fortunately for Tiger fans. He plucked that thing, didn't he? Just plucked it. Huge third down, though. Can Missouri get it? Short side of the field, call for Smith, and he won't even get close. Interesting, they used the boundary side, not the field side, and wouldn't go wide with it. Yep, and I wonder if this is four down territory for Gary Pinkle now, down by 14 points. You know, the clock is your enemy. You're going to have minimal possessions left. When are you going to have better field position than this to potentially score a touchdown to 
cut it to a one-score game, and I think he is going to have four down territory. Here. I don't know if they have a choice. Yeah. We mentioned they don't have that many possessions left in this game, and they will be going for it on fourth down. Can Missouri get it done? Trailing by 14. Now Coffey and Mboga have been his best receivers today. In trouble. Oh. What a, almost a great grab. Inside the 15. It's out of the hands of Coffee, though. Incomplete. And Nebraska holds. Nice job by McPherson. I mean, he broke on that ball. He had great route recognition. And his break on the ball was phenomenal. His arrival for contact was simultaneous to that of the football. Because Smith threw a strike. I mean, this was maybe his best ball of the day. It's on the money with McPherson. He was not going to give an inch. That is just great coverage. Now, Coffey wanted a penalty. He thought McPherson went through him to make a play on the football, but I thought he timed it up very well. Yeah, it looked like he poked it out cleanly yep. with the ball coming in. So Nebraska gets it back. Their offense hasn't done a thing today. <laughs> Their ground game has kept Missouri at bay, though. It's in the like, sense that they've kept the defense out there for a while. It's like a turnover by the black shirts, though. Corey Ross. Belton coming out of the backfield. Why not? Jason Simpson's done it Corey all Ross game long. Do it again. Wrapped up by number six. Jason First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Is it Overstock.com today? Start saving. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. So Missouri cannot afford Nebraska a first down. Every first down you look at, though, and Nebraska's going to try to run the football at least 90 seconds off the clock. And as you look at this, it's a huge game for Nebraska because the first tiebreaker is head-to-head -head competition. You know, win today, you take a game lead, and then two over Missouri, literally. Daly out of the edge. He's got fullback oh. three wall there. And almost. They wanted a flag on Overstreet. Won't get it. I, I thought Overstreet turned into the receiver, and they had to reverse roles. I mean, that ball thrown into the wind was just held up. And as you described it so well, floated. I mean, it hung up there forever. And I'm sure Bill Callahan was saying, get down. Somebody get a shotgun and shoot that thing out of the air. Because it just floated, floated over the top. Man, dangerous throw. Joe Daly now 4 of 17 for 26 yards. Yet the Huskers are up by 14. Huge third down for the Missouri defense. Pocket protection is good. Over the middle, deflected, almost intercepted. He went for Mulkey. But it could have been picked by Overstreet. Well, I'll tell you who got his hand on the football was James Kinney. And the fans wanted interference, but once Kinney touched the right. ball to deflect it, you can pound the receiver because it's no longer, it's it's fair game. And, and Kinney did a good job of taking his drop in, the, in his zone as a linebacker. And once he tips the ball like he does right there, you can make the hit. So that's a good play. The crowd uh, responding, looking for the interference. There is none on the deflected ball. Sam Cook back out there. He's had a couple of snaps where he really had to go up and get them, but it helps. He's 6'1, 230. This one a perfect. And the wobbler into the wind, and Boga stays away again. And that cost Missouri again. Boy, fair catches. See, I guess it's the lost start of the fair catch. He's not confident, though, fielding that ball into the wind. That knuckleball, he, he's afraid of uh, a, a tragedy turning it over. He's not confident in securing it. So the defense does it again. We had our question on FoxSports.com on MSN. Who is the coach of the year so far? Man, Urban Meyer is their vote. Tuberville of Auburn, second. Franchoni down at Texas A&M. Alvarez of Wisconsin's done a great job. Yeah. And you can log on, still vote. Still be a factor. First and ten. Missouri's got it back at the 27 with the wind at their back. Brad Smith in trouble. He's got a man available, another great grab. This time, it's Mboga. We've seen Coffee come up with clutch ones. Boy, I'll tell you, Brad Smith has eyes in the back of his head. When he makes the decision to separate, he feels the rush from the backside. Now he says, I got to go. Now watch him throw accurately on the run, squaring the shoulder pads up, and then the catch by Mboga. I mean, that is unbelievable execution by the quarterback and receiver, both ends of that. And he got about six. It's out to the 33. Anything there? Tony Temple trying to make the most of it. Cut it back. 
As he tried to see the pursuit slide by. Sievers got to him. He's short of the first down by a yard. Going back to the play by Smith, though, the way he sprinted those yeah. five yards away from the end, that's the separation. Yeah, the acceleration. I mean, he can go zero to 60 faster than a lot of people. You know, he's a he's a Ferrari, a Maserati out there. Maserati and everybody else is, you know, just a regular sedan. Time working against Missouri. More than two and a half gone by in the fourth. Now on their side, Nebraska's been outscored 58-28 in the fourth quarter this season. They were outscored 14 to nothing against at K State last week. So now third, a little less than two. Beeman in front of Temple. Smith. The catch and barely getting the first down. He's right across the stick by maybe a half yard. He went to Victor Cisse. And he was seesawing that first down line. Is he there? Is he not? How about seesaw. size? 6'6", 270. He's got lineman size almost. And, you know, he doesn't look like he's 270. He no. carries 270 very well in that 6'6", six six inch frame. He's got long arms. He can tie his shoes without bending over. Senior from Silver Spring, Missouri. You're a sick person. <laughs> I thought he had it easily. Now, all of a sudden, as I see the spot, Missouri didn't get a great spot. They've got it. They've got it by the nose of the football. Oh, that's a bold call by our man. And oh, and they don't. no, they could. They're inches shy. They're, now it, it's a big. This you got to go. I mean, you almost at this point you have to just about. You have no choice. I mean, it's it, the time is your biggest enemy. You're down two scores and. Even though there's almost 12 minutes left in the game, you got to basically have faith in your offensive line that it can get you two inches. Gary Pinkle is going to go. So the offense stays on the field. But if you need that, and you've got a quarterback like Brad Smith at 6'2", 2'10", 2'15", right. just sneak it. The first thing that uh, Nebraska has to do, don't jump off sides. You know, it might be one of those things. There you go. Gadget. Yep. Will it stay a gadget play, though? Now, and look at the confusion by Nebraska. They're going to call timeout. Barrett Rude does a good job of signaling the timeout. What he was going to do is try to isolate, isolate, and then run the quarterback sneak with just three linemen in front of him instead of all the box being crowded. Good idea. Yep. But Nebraska, quick to the timeout. At that uh, weak guard spot coming off the ball, number 52. He kind of moves some folks around back there. Honorable mention all Big 12 last year. Take a look. Come off the ball. Boom. Knock guys around. Brad Smith cozy up right behind you. So they put their best running the ball or quarterback sneaking the ball behind their best lineman sound play. We'll find out if that burn timeout hurts Nebraska down the road. If they would have needed it. Moving the pocket, and there's a hold on character. Let's see if they throw a flag as Smith just throws it away. And you could see number 90 was just wrestled. Yeah, and it, I think it was Cisse that was working against him. And that's a that's a mismatch, you know, defensive end against tight end. And uh, Cisse get, get called for the hold. He got overpowered. And again, Missouri shoots itself in the foot. You get the you get the first down, and then you have a a penalty that uh, takes you back. Holding 84 offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. It is Victor Cisse. You're talking about the tight end. And Cisse is working here against Carriker. And Carriker's got him on skates. He's overpowering. He grabs with that left hand and grabs a bunch of jersey and can't let you get to my quarterback, but uh, it's holding. So they take it back 10 yards to the 27. It is going to be first and 20. Sixth penalty marked off against Missouri today. 35 yards in assessments. Bullet over the middle. Man, did Mboga hold on? Nope, walking no. out. On his way down, lost it. Carrick was a lifter of the year for Nebraska. And in this weight program, when you are designated lifter of the year, that's significant. And does he catch the ball or not? Nope, the ground helps him as uh, he loses it and rolls over the top of the football. Good call. There's the lift of the year right there. we got the holding penalty overpowering the tight end, Cisse. And Beeman, the only one in the backfield was Smith on second and 20. And Smith's got all day. Whoa. Well, his receiver stopped on the route as he went to coffee. So a breakdown. Somebody didn't know the play. 
Yeah. A breakdown there, not on the same page, quarterback and receiver. Missouri, as we've said so many times, they haven't won here in Lincoln since 78. And look at that. That number tells it all right there. No points in the fourth quarter. And here they are, down 14 in the fourth quarter again. The black shirts are all over them. Trips on the wide side of the field, knee 20 to keep the drive alive, and Smith in trouble trying to manufacture something. Intercepted, picked off by Bullocks, the free safety. Nebraska's got it in great field position at their own 41. Well, Daniel Bullocks is twin, who's one minute older. Daniel has four interceptions. Josh just gets his second interception. The Bullocks brothers playing safety for Nebraska. And Josh comes up with a big play. Brad Smith trying to create something, trying to make something happen. Pressure in his face, tries to get it down the field. He's being hit as he releases the ball, can't get enough mustard on it. And Bullocks gathers in the underthrown football, gets a foot down with possession. Nebraska ball, first turnover of the day for either team. Good play by Bullocks, but on a play like that, your wide receiver's got to play defensive back. Corey Ross. Hit and dropped in the backfield. Jason Simpson again. He has been the star defensively for Missouri. Atia Ellison also there. Receiver thinks he's got Bullock's beaten. He does not make a reaction to the football well enough, as you described, Joel, to come back and at least reverse rolls and try to strip it out of there. He thinks, I got Bullock's beaten. Brad Smith is hit as he throws it and doesn't get enough on it, and he just can't recover in time to disturb Bullocks in his effort to secure the ball. 13th career pick for Bullocks. That is just one shy of the Nebraska career record. Ross trying to bend it. Man, takes it. Good carry across the 43 to the 44 as Simpson got to him once again. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, time to answer an email. Steve from Omaha wants to know how long do we think it'll take for the Nebraska's West Coast offense to click under Bill Callahan? Now, right now, as we talked about earlier, it takes time to learn this offense. I talked to Joe Daly after a walkthrough yesterday. He said he loves throwing the football, and the impression is back in high school that they ran a lot. He said he was actually coming to Nebraska because they told him they, they were going to open the offense up a lot more. That was under Frank Solich. So now with Callahan in, he says he loves it. Ross diving. Does he get to the first down? No. Short across the 48 to the 49. But you know, Noxie, the thing is, he's going to have to defend his job next year because Nebraska's already got a commitment from a quarterback, high school quarterback out of Florida, that Florida, Florida State, Miami, they all wanted. And Bill Callahan is getting into the quarterbacks and wide receiver households and getting to the kitchen table with the parents and saying, you come to Nebraska, my West Coast offense, you can play right away. I and just I, And just listening to the recruiting experts over the last few days because all the commitments right. are starting to come in. Number three right now in the country. You got their top five right. and could be the number one recruiting team in the nation before so, it is all over. Look at the story he's got to tell. I, I ran this offense. I had an MVP in Gannon, went to the Super Bowl. You know, we can win a national championship. Why don't you come be my guy? Cook, real busy day. And he hits it below the wind for the most part. Now, what kind of bounce? Nice. It's going that way for Nebraska. Cook's the MVP today. Cook is determined field position. Cook, gold star for the Cook man. And Dusty Kaiser down there to collect it. So it's back at the eight yard line. That's where Missouri is going to get it. Trailing by 14. How much do they miss? Damian Nash, the leading running back today. Nebraska Cornhuskers. Boy, he when he put on the pads, not that he looked like Quasimodo, but he was broad around the shoulders. Yes, he was. On first down for the nine, Smith can't get out of the backfield. Titus Adams, Lakeven Smith combining. Now, how much do the Tigers, as we wind our way down in this contest, miss their leading ground gainer this year at 87 yards a game, Damian Nash? Well, obviously, they've not been able to run the football at all, but it starts right here. Nebraska is playing team defense so well, they are controlling the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if they had Marshall Falk <laughs> that they would be running the ball all that much better. I mean, Nebraska's taking away all the rush lanes by out executing Missouri up front. 31 carries, 50 yards for Missouri on the ground today. Smith, plenty of time, and Mboga's there. He's got the first down. He's out across the 24 to the 25. 
pass from Smith. That was a well thrown ball. The wind is at the back of Missouri. Anything can happen. Missouri still has all three of their timeouts remaining with inside of eight minutes left to play. And they do have an ability to make big plays because the guy under center is a quality guy. Brad Smith showing what he can do in the pocket. His vision unimpeded. Nice route between linebackers and secondaries. From the 25. Good coverage downfield. He only has one man on that side of the field to begin with. There was contact a couple of times, and they're going to let it go. Boy, that is a break as Coffey was held up initially by Washington, and then Bullocks came over. That ball was in the air well over 50 yards. Watch where Smith launches the ball from. Again, he has to get out of pocket. He's going to throw it from about the 16-yard line. And the ball comes down at about the 31-yard line. That ball's in the air for a long time. Of course, he's got the wind at his back in this quarter now. You've got to remember that. Now they put two to the wide side of the field, looking at a second and 10. Stops the clock with 7.37 to play. Brad Smith got a block from Greenman and nobody else. Penetration. Teamer, the sophomore from Omaha, along with Bernard Thomas. Teamer really torpedoed the play. Brad Smith is hurt. He's getting up slowly, limping to the sideline, twisted an ankle. Will he be able to maintain first down line brought there to you is. by Overstock.com for name brand products at clearance prices. It's all about the O, Overstock.com. There he is, limping back to the huddle. Definite hitch to get along. Brad Smith, left ankle problem right now. He's been hit a lot today. He's going to be in the hot tub tomorrow. He's going to be a sore man when he wakes up. Somebody was to tell me that Mizzou last weekend, homecoming, against Oklahoma State would not score in the second half at home and then come up to Lincoln against a defense that has been maligned all year and not score in the second Six half Six quarters. Here. Six quarters. Hard to a believe. Touchdown. Yeah, they got to take a timeout here. Their quarterback is definitely hurt. 6.50 to play with Nebraska in control. Brad Smith to stay in the game after the timeout. Yeah, will the drive stay alive? Good comeback. Bad completion to Umboga. He's got the first down. So going to the wide side of the field. A long throw on the out. McPherson just could not quite, couldn't find the football. And he, as right here, as he, oh, he just can't find it, overruns it. He goes out into space. Smith throws it where his receiver can make the play on it. He finds the football before McPherson. He adjusts to the ball. McPherson can't. Big completion. Six and a half to play. Missouri's got time, but they've got to score on this possession and one more. Smith out of time. Man, it'll be second and ten when we come back. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break and Mike Goldberg. Mike, what's the latest? Joel, it is almost State this season. And Les Miles is one heck of a football coach, but boy, the Sooners have a freak. Adrian Peterson is unreal. Tall kid, tall kid. Now Smith in trouble and on his way down. Thomas got him from the blind side. Look, even Smith there as well with Bernard Thomas. Well, two things today for Missouri. Up front, their offensive and defensive line has been beaten in their kicking game. Don't tell Gary Pinkle the kicking game and special teams aren't important. He is acutely aware of it and reminded of it today. But here is offensive line overpowered. You know, it's tough to pass block when you know you have to throw the football. Those defensive linemen are pinning their ears back and they want to meet the quarterback. And as an offensive lineman, it is brutal. They've shut the running game down and made Brad Smith try to beat him with the throwing arm and the O-line's getting knocked around. So Missouri has not been able to run the football. Damian Nash suspended. Need the oh. try to the marker and what a grab. Does it come down inbounds? Yeah. Yes, what a grab by Rucker. The drive and the hopes of Missouri are still alive, believe it or not. The little brother of the rush end here at Nebraska, Mike Rucker. Bullocks thought he had it, didn't he? Who is now playing in the national. Look at this. Tip it. Bullocks gets a hand on it. Tip it to yourself, young man. He gets both feet in. Rucker tight ropes it with both feet. Tip it. Bullocks tips it. And that's just concentration and focus staying with the ball. Both feet in bounds with possession. That's a great job by Rucker. So Rucker. Takes it out close to the midfield stripe. And going for the bundle. Jump ball. And boy, the defensive back never turned around to locate it with Franklin running. And usually you see a flag on a play like that. That is a real break for Nebraska's Donald DeFran. 
Yeah, it is. Usually, it is. if you don't locate the ball, you see a you see a, a flag. Something comes out. There wasn't any kind of contact contact, I guess, in the official's opinion that that altered the outcome of the play. And uh, geez, I'm telling you, <laughs> that uh, that to me is. Uh, Kevin Cosgrove right now is breathing a heavy, heavy sigh of relief. Now would have been a 15-yard mark off down to the 34 instead. Second and 10 at the 49. Early movement again. Ball start. No time out, Nebraska. Nebraska. Yes. Time so out, Nebraska. Nebraska's used their second. Missouri still has two left. And we'll be back to Lincoln with 5.28 to play. Last chance time for the Tigers. On FSN, catch is made. Coffee shows it the linesman at the 36 and another first down for Missouri. Well, Missouri's got to get a touchdown, a stop, and then with two timeouts on the board, another one to force overtime. Yeah, and it's up, uphill sledding right now. Tough to get the big chunks when Nebraska's playing deep zone. Out of the gun. Smith with pressure coming. Man, in and out of the hands at the 26 of Mboga. And a flag That's comes flag out. Well, we, saw, we saw a flag. We yep. didn't see a flag when it looked like an automatic on the sideline. That's going to be 15 yards. Move the football. Pass out of fairs. Defense. Call Dan Daniel Bullocks on that play. And the chains are moving for the Missouri Tigers. Still a life for Missouri. Let's see if Daniel Bullocks gets there before the football. Oh, that's close. Well, I thought it was more of a, that's a good play compared to the one on the sideline on the deep ball. Yeah, that was uh, molestation on the sideline. <laughs> to Smith now. And his man's out of bounds. And anyway, oh. another flag as Coffee was pushed out of bounds, or was it coming back into play after he went out of bounds? No, it's, not, it's yes. defensive pass interference. They're saying that, that uh, McPherson routed him out of bounds. Back to back. See, Dave, I don't understand this because Nebraska's been using their hands in the secondary the entire game. So you've got to be consistent. And all of a sudden now, I don't blame the kids. They've been using it and getting away with it. Take a look at what goes on down here. As, as he tries to get it up the football field, he is ridden out of bounds. Yeah, ball's in the air already. Ball's in the air, and he's ridden out of bounds. He's pushed out of bounds. And that's the call for the first and on coffee. So now it's going to take the first and goal for the first time today for Missouri at the nine-yard line of the Huskers. And that was definite contact well before the arrival of the football that, that altered the outcome of the play. I mean, I, you know, you, you do have to call that. Brad Smith, is he going to run it out of the gun on first and goal? No. Wants to throw it, and he's got room for Coffee, who can't get away. What a great tackle. Out on the edge as DeFran was there again. DeFran limited yakety yak. That was one of the keys we talked about. Yards after catch, yards after contact. Nice, sure, open field tackle by DeFran. Second and goal. Gain of five at the four. Smith. Fade, corner of the end zone, popped away from Coffey. Good job again by the friend. Yeah, Coffey's got that height that we talked about. Coffey's 6'5", 220 pounds. He's got a big advantage over all, almost any defensive back, but the friend stayed after this one. Honestly, though, you got to get the ball up, give him a chance. I mean, Coffey uh, basically never had a chance to make that fade catch. Gave DeFran more of an opportunity to defend it. You have to get it up higher into the back corner of the end zone to allow Coffey to use that six foot five inch body, long arms, and vertical jump. Well, I'm surprised they didn't spread the defense and run Smith. One of the snaps down here. They put three on the short side. Smith is going to run it to the short side now, and that is just incredible. <laughs> Bradley's over there with Carriker. It's the last thing I thought I'd see called. Well, it's the quarterback uh, sweep right there with the lead blocker. It's a one-back set, but it's never a one-back set when number 16's in the backfield. It's a two-back set, and he's using his, his lead blocker. But you talk about Nebraska coming off blocks and winning at the line of scrimmage. Carriker, Carriker does a, a fantastic job of playing off the block and, and, and making a play. And also, you have to really tip your cap to Stuart Bradley, who did the same thing. So now Missouri 
down to their final snap if they're going to stay in the game. Here we go, fourth and goal. Time for Smith. And overshoots Martin Rucker. That should do it as McPherson was defending on the play. And McPherson twisting an ankle. He's limping as he goes to the Nebraska sideline, but it doesn't hurt much when you have a 14-point lead. Brad Smith cannot hook up with his two freshmen. The Missouri coaching staff has been unbelievably impressed with Rucker. We saw the athleticism when he made that play on the sideline. You can see why Rucker's upset because McPherson went down, twisted that ankle. He was wide open, and the ball sailed on Brad Smith. We've seen both quarterbacks with the wind at their back have the ball sail on him and sail high. So you know you're in trouble when your quarterback's thrown 51 passes. Smith, 23 of 51. For what, about 150 yards? <laughs> 277, you're, <laughs> you're a sick puppy. In the eye, Grewald and Ross. And Ross into the secondary. They can run out the clock now as they take it up to the 14, a gain of close to six. Dr. Pepper, game break time with Mike Goldberg. Mike. The guys, a beautiful day. They're there in L.A. today. <laughs> and what a home field. The Rose Bowl for UCLA. They're home since 1982. And will UCLA bounce back? Ross, look out. Big yardage for Corey Ross. And will he go the distance? I think he will. Touchdown, Nebraska. <laughs> 86 yards on the run. That'll seal the deal. There were two missed tackles on the play. Nebraska came on a run blitz. Ross made a miss at the line of scrimmage. Then David Overstreet at about midfield missed. Watch Ross's vision and watch him make the first miss coming off the edge right there. There's the missed tackle. You better be able to make that tackle. If they blitz Mitchell like they did a corner and right here. A miss by Overstreet. And he takes out a, a teammate after the missed tackle. So the secondary, very, very sloppy on that play. Mitchell blitzes, corner blitz. He should have had a tackle for loss. It ends up being a big, big touchdown run. DeAngelis with the point after. There's one thing you can't do, though. You can't blame Missouri's defense today. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. So the long run of 86 yards, and the rest are now the leader in the Big 12's North Division. the touchdown well watch the first Mitch here come Mitchell on this on the corner blitz he misses now down the field Corey Ross he makes Overstreet miss Overstreet takes out the teammate and then his golden goal post 86 yard touchdown 194 yards rushing for Ross a career high that is our Dr. Pepper player of the game with a tip of the cap to Shanley and the punter Sam Cook. Cook. And he's got who, who I'm told dictated he, field and position. And I'm told Sam can sing. Is he really? I'll tell you what, you, you definitely can. Give me a little Barry White bro. From 20. Come on, give me a from little From the Barry. 23. Keep it in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath. Low it away, but it is a grab for a loss of a yard to Tony Marcus Woods. And Shanley did have a sensational day. He was involved in both bot plays punt-wise for Missouri. And here Missouri breaks down in their punt protection. Shanley takes advantage, blocks the punt, and now the miss by Haynes on the snap, and Shanley recovers. McPherson almost picks. Almost with the pick is it was intended for Equer Equer. And let's head back so good. down to Jim Knox. All right, Joel, here it is. Victory Bell uh, really started in 1927. The Honor Society will take it over to the Nebraska sidelines. The winner gets the bell for a year. The Nebraska guys, Nick and Chris, the Honor Society. Go ahead, take the bell, guys. It weighs a lot, but go ahead. Off they go, guys. There we go. The See, big it, bell you know, heading over to Nebraska sideline. Uh, little Husker I, Bell. I don't disagree, but on Woo! Breeders' Cup Day, I just never cash a ticket before the race <laughs> is over. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be third to about 11. I think it's safe, though. I think so. It's a one time. Oh, weaving his way is Woods. And he's got a first down. But time is out on Missouri, and now they're going to be four and four on the year, suffering their th third consecutive loss. This wasn't close, though, because the offense never got on track. The well, Texas game was close. Last week was close as well. When you look at Nebraska, you get you got to give them a tip of the cap for resiliency. They keep coming back. 
And Smith trying to elude the pressure. Marcus Woods out of bounds. Now looking ahead. Now Mizzou won. Missouri had the drive. They were in the driver's seat right. because they're at home for two of the three. K-State and Kansas. And well, they're, they're facing the only road games, the second division squad, Iowa State. And, and look at Kansas State. Tonight they play Texas Tech and Lubbock. If Kansas State can win that game, they are in control of their own destiny because they have beaten Nebraska head-to-head. -head. If they beat Missouri next week head-to-head -head after beating Texas Tech, they are right back in the thick of it. Do not count Bill Snyder out. Boy, you said that emphatically. Man thrown behind Coffee. Tough, tough day for Brad Smith. So we have 205 remaining. Nebraska will go to three and two in the Big 12 North. Five and three overall. And you had all these ominous signs for Nebraska where they haven't had it's been 42 years yep. non-losing seasons. I mean, winning seasons, 41 of the 42. The seven and seven year a couple of years ago was the only season where they were at 500. Way overthrown by Smith for coffee. But and then you talk about the bowl appearances, 36 straight bowl appearances. That's on the line in your first year taking over a program like this. And you're looking at four and four if you don't win at home. And, and the thing, the thing that Bill Callahan looking at right now, five and three. And, and, and minus 10 in the turnover department. Usually, you don't, you're not five and three when you're minus 10 turnovers, but his team is resilient. They found ways to win. The big loss today, though, Matt Herrian. They win the game, but they lose their big, big target, Matt Herrian. That's a definite blow. Inside the 15, it'll die right there as it's grabbed at the Tigers. So Nebraska will run out the clock with a minute 50 to play. And Missouri's probably feeling fortunate right now they didn't come here last night. Big 12 North, Nebraska 3-2, and two, Mizzou falls to 2-3. and three. You talked about K-State later right. tonight against Texas Tech. If they can crawl in. Well, look at, look at Texas did last week sure. with Tech. They overpowered them. Yep, and if Kansas State can beat Texas Tech, next week they have Missouri. And you look at this, Nebraska has a big lead over Missouri because the tiebreaker, first tiebreaker's head-to-head -head competition. And Nebraska has that edge over Missouri right now if they finish in a tie. Todd is the running back. They give it to Jackson as the fullback. Todd led the way. He'll be past the 16, the 17. Gain of about three. You know, you, you look at, uh, again, a, a tip of the cap to Kevin Cosgrove. His team was run over by Kansas State defensively. 294 yards rushing. Kansas State has the defensive coordinator, Kevin Cosgrove. And front his, page of the paper today. Oh, yeah. Huge picture. Under pressure. Oh, you under, got it. Under the gun. <laughs> under the gun is Kevin Costco. Well, his team responded, and they shut down Missouri's running game and said, you know what? We're going to make Smith try to win this game with his strong arm. We'll take our chances. And they, it worked. Well, no, we don't like to hear that. No. <laughs> You're not supposed to hit him in the face. We are in the background. Our microphones are too good. There's Kevin Cosgro coming over after many, many years with Barry Alvarez. And Nebraska, good one coming up. Stanford, almost just a few weeks back at home, shocked the number one team in the nation. And USC barely got by Stanford. And, and really, Kevin Cosgrove, his defense literally pitched a shutout. I mean, the one field goal given up was because of short field after Missouri got their hand on one of Nebraska's punts and gave short field up. And, and his, his defense responded. And, and boy, he's happy in that sideline. His defense responded, bowled their backs and their necks, and said, you're only getting a field goal out of it. Yeah, as good as Brad Smith has been in his first two years in the Missouri Tiger uniform, and we just talked about it a few minutes ago, hard to believe as Nebraska gets ready to celebrate, and you're right, it's like a shutout for Cosgrove and his group. They can enjoy and savor this moment. Homecoming weekend and Bill Callahan's first homecoming, they dominate Missouri, shut down the Missouri ground game completely, and win it by 21 points. Now... It is official. You can take that ticket to the window. <laughs> That's right. Nebraska wins it 24 to 3. Jim Knox. Congratulations, Coach. First off, the defense, great performance, limiting Missouri to just 51 yards on the ground, doing a nice job containing Brad Smith. I tell you, Jim, I'm really proud of our defense, the way they came out today. And 
sustain that effort through two halves. Uh, it was just incredible to see the type of pressure they displayed on Brad Smith, who I think is an outstanding quarterback. Another big key, especially teams, two block punts. Well, you know, that's something we continue to work on, and it, it paid some dividends today in, in some crucial times, and a lot of credit goes to Bill Bush and his core, and those guys really stepped up and made some significant plays today. All right, also the offense, West Coast offense, and this win tough to throw the football, but Corey Ross doing the damage on the ground. Well, we knew we had to run the ball. This is the best pass defense in the conference. Uh, we missed some opportunities, but to, uh, to our kids' pride, I think we kept playing hard, and we missed some opportunities, but we're going to have to go back and work on them. All right, Coach, congratulations on the homecoming win. Real quick, let's get Brer Root in here, who led that defense today. The black shirts were on target today, especially doing a nice job slowing down Brad Smith, Barrett. Yeah, you know, we got, you know, Coach McBride and Jared Thomas, they came back and talked to us. And just, you know, hearing those guys talk and see the pride they have, you know, there was no way we were gonna we were gonna give up anything today. We we were so excited. And was that what it was all about, pride today after the slow start against Kansas State last week, a letdown, and then all of a sudden coming back today? Did you guys feel like you had something to prove? Oh, I mean, Kansas State was an absolute disaster, and you know, we said, hey, all this game is is you know, it's will and it's heart, and it's it's saying you're not gonna get blocked and say you're not gonna miss tackles, and and that's what happened. And right now, because of the defense's outstanding play. Outstanding play. All of a sudden, you guys are leading the North in the Big 12 division. Yeah, you know, uh, usually when you lose three games, you, you don't think you're going to be a division leader. But, you know, hey, we got a shot, you know. And you get down, if you get down to the Big 12 championship game, anything can happen, you know, like we saw last year. So, you know, we just got to go out. We got to we gotta take one game at a time. We got to, you know, we got to play well like this every week. All right, Barrett, congratulations okay. on the big afternoon. Joel? Ton of heart. You're absolutely right. He brought up heart, will. You give up 70 points against Texas Tech. December 4th, Big 12 title game. You know it's on his mind. It's at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Story of the day, though, Missouri did not have a ground game, could not move the football yeah, against the front seven. But on the opposite side, a career best oh. day for Corey Ross, he the junior strong. from Denver. He was strong. 194 yards. And he broke the hearts of the Missouri fans. And he took pressure off Joe Daly as we talk about trying to throw in the wind today. And, and he's 5'6", 195 pounds. Hard to find behind that offensive line. Erickson throws a great downfield block. That was after one of the punt miscues and, and scored on the next play. And here's the signature play for the day for him. 86-yard touchdown made Mi a Mitchell miss at the beginning, Overstreet miss in the middle of the run, and then finished it all by his lonesome. A big day for Corey Ross. Man, I don't think, Dave, anybody would have thought that Nebraska, after the way they started this year overall, Halloween weekend would be on top of the Big 12 North standings. Yeah, this is, and, and, you, and when you think about it, Nebraska, minus 10. They were plus one today, but minus 10 on the season in the giveaway, takeaway, turnover ratio usually that would lead to three and five or even worse but they're five and three they're finding ways to win their defense was the big story today as well as the punting game causing problems there were turnovers result, and, and dictating field position Missouri special teams well we should have known right away their first possession of the missed field goal downwind a 42 yard attempt yeah that one should have been handled now Shanley starts to get involved and there's an assignment miscue and then Akis takes it in for the score after Shanley blocks it not being picked up and then Haney or Haynes making just a, uh, a a terrible terrible play not being able to handle that snap and Shanley comes up with that football. You got Mr. Haney of Green Acres on your mind, do yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Look at that. Two punt miscues, two to one. And look at the rushing yards, Dave. Oh, gee. look at this. One for 15 on third down is Nebraska, and they win the game going away. I've never seen that before. One for 15. Mrs. Riley tells me that computes to less, much less than 10%. <laughs> and, I mean, how do you win a game by the score they want? And it's because of this. Punt miscues, and uh, right here. They ran the ball for over a football field and a half better than, than uh, Missouri did. That was the story of the game. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a very promising season for the Missouri Tigers. They're four and one, headed to Texas, lose their 28 to 20. Right. Blow a 17 to nothing lead at home. Don't score a point. Right. Lose all their momentum in the last minute of the first half last week, and then come here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and they don't get into the end zone with Brad Smith. Missouri committed the cardinal sin. They let a bad, a bad half against Oklahoma State cost them another game. Basically, a bad half cost them two football games when it only should have cost them one. 
they got to get over it. You can't have that hangover lead and take you through the entire next week and come out and lay an egg and lose two conference games because of one poor half performance against Oklahoma State. Well, there's no doubt. And he was suspended disciplinary reasons. And right. we don't know whether it was insubordination or not, but Damian Nash was definitely missed. And you said, I don't know if Marcus Falk. Well, I think a guy that averages close to 100 yards could have helped him today. Well, you know, any, any able body would have helped. But I'll tell you, the difference in the game, Joel, was Nebraska's offensive and defensive line controlled the line of scrimmage, and usually that leads to wins. Well, our college football Saturday triple header will continue. Is up next. We head to the Rose Bowl. Arroyo Seco in Pasadena as Stanford matches up with UCLA on our home field. And that's all followed at 7 o'clock Eastern. Another Big 12 matchup and a very good one. We'll know a lot about the North later tonight. Kansas State taking on Texas Tech in love it. One of our favorite stops on the tour. For Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. So long from Lincoln. Our final score again, the Huskers over the Tigers 24-3.